Hello, folks. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri, set a one hour timer. She did it. Welcome to Beej's Anime Roundup here on the Loading Ready Run Beautiful Entertainment Network. I'm Beej. I'm here with Siri. And uh, in about an hour, I hope to finish the first run through <laughs> of. Uh, the 2024 winter anime season. I want to welcome all of you tonight. Uh, thank you for joining me. We do this once a cour, and I uh, I guess get a little things out of the way. Uh, this show is brought to you by you. It's it's as much your fault as it is mine. patreoncom slash run is where you can go to support us uh, in a in quite a direct manner. Um, so again, that's patreoncom slash run. But of course, you guys are watching on Twitch Live, and then some of you will be watching on YouTube later at youtube.com slash loading ready run. If you are interested, I think that's where this goes. This actually might be loading ready uh, live, which is our streams channel. But you can come to the main channel, youtube.com slash loading ready run, and you could give super thanks, I think, just about anywhere, but you can join the main channel's memberships. Uh, if that's another way you want to support the channel. And uh what else the store is good store.loadingreadyrun.com where you can buy shirts and uh shirts and uh shirts and uh there's some play mats there's some other stuff there too go check it out uh we have lots of branded merch and uh we're always working on making merch um i i am i will apologize for being a little slow on uh the making of the merch uh, in the last little bit but i'm hoping to have more merch soon i hope oh I'm being told my microphone sounds hot. That's probably because, at least in my ears, it's coming through quite well. Um, I can bring that down a bit. I have this lot probably closer to my mouth than uh, than Ian and uh, Heather do, who were doing the stream just before us. That's right. There's a whole bunch of stuff. You can find out what's going on on loadingreadyrun.com slash live. Uh, that's our entire schedule. And uh, I'm more than happy to make minor adjustments to my audio if people find it uh, a problem because why not? Why don't we just keep kind of like bumping things back and forth until everybody's happy? You know, that's that's how Twitch channels work after all. So let's see. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's let's just move on. We got to get going because if I, if I don't get going, then I'm going to be here all night. Oh, good. That worked. We were talking about the 2024 winter anime season, and what better way to start off than with Sanju Sai Made Dote Dato Mahoskai Ni Nareru Rashi. I'm not going to let anyone say anything bad about my pronunciation. I didn't watch this. Let's move on. Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Keep moving stuff around on the desks until I get a, at least a mouse that works right in front of me. All right. Oh, good. <laughs> we have a, oh, right. Narwhals and Trenchcoat brings up a good point. Um, we, this is not why I'm not why I stop on this one and, and this here. I just want to let people know uh, that um, we, if you, if you see me run across something, for example, it's like, oh, but I watched this beach and I really liked it. Now I feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about it, right? We all have our own tastes. Uh, some of you are going to like things, some of you are not going to like things. Um, I don't want arguments to start off in chat or in our Discord at discord.gg slash LRR. Uh, we're all going to enjoy things differently. Don't yell at people if they if they like a thing that you don't. Everybody's fave is somebody else's problematic fave is somebody else's problematic problem. So let's kind of be chill about it. Um, not let's kind of. Let's actually be chill about it, okay? It's just about watching stuff that we enjoy. Let's not hand anybody their ass over the things that they like or the things that they dislike, also that too. Uh, and I'm gonna just throw out there, um, uh, I am a fan of smut. I even have a coaster now that says that. Uh, if you are not a fan of smut, great, good for you. Uh, we don't hate on anybody here for liking smut, but we also don't throw that in everybody else's faces about, we don't get so totally horny about smut in the chat and we don't get horny about that here where I'm sitting. Uh, so if we like a thing, we like a thing and you're allowed to like smut, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think you'll find most of the community thinks there's anything wrong with that. Uh, that that is just let's just be comfortable people here, and and let's be uh, civil and uh, and even more than civil, let's try to be nice to each other. So what I did watch this season 
is uh, Akiyaku Reijo level 99 or QGQ. Watashi wa Urabosu desu ga mao de wa arimasen. This is known as Villainous level 99. I didn't think this was going to be great. I thought it would just be fun because it's interesting, this idea. It's just this college kid, and I'm like, nah, they're all high schoolers. Let's not. Let, well, all oh, right. The college kid is the one who gets reborn. It's an isekai. This college kid gets reborn into a, a video game that she likes, but she gets reborn into the villainous role. And we've been seeing lots of Akiyaku Reijo uh, anime out there. Um, the kind, you know, it's like, oh, you're in a video game, but you're the bad girl. So what are you going to do to not be the bad girl anymore? Or what are you going to do to continue to be the bad girl, but actually do something cool? Um, and, and in the end, I'm like, this was actually pretty good. Uh, I think it suffered a little bit from a, um, a pretty rote ending. It didn't do anything more interesting. Uh, Heather watched it with me because we both kind of liked it. You know, we liked the idea of, of she's so ungodly powerful that uh, how does she even try to fit in with everybody else? Uh, it, it's... I don't know if that was a fault of wherever the story came from originally. If this was like, if this was based on manga, it's a light novel. It kind of feels like it's a light novel. Um, and if it is just kind of, if it was a by the numbers kind of light novel anyway, despite the fun premise, uh, I feel like it, the anime left some stuff hanging anyway. So, nah. all right, let's just keep this on the mat. I'm not even going to bother looking for my coaster anymore. Ao no Exorcist, Shimane Illuminati Hen. I did not watch this because I have never watched The Blue Exorcist. Moving on. Bokuro no Kokuro no Yabayatsu, second season. Of course I watched this. In fact, I watched the 13th episode not an hour ago before getting here. I was like, I have this. I, I want to watch the end of the season to see how they wrap everything up. Um, it is so good. It is, as a, as a school-age romance goes, is a school-age romance for if you were ever a really, really awkward um, uh, young man, then you will find a lot, I think, to gain from this. If you have to be quite awkward, I was quite awkward. Uh, there are a lot of people who I think also did not like the premise of this because it's it's a challenging premise. It is very much that kind of uh, chunibyo um the middle schooler syndrome, as they always refer to it. These kids are in middle school, by the way. They're off, like 14 years old. Um, and it is it is quite the thing. It obviously ends with, it has a happy ending. The manga I found has, I mean, the manga's gone further now uh, that they're, I believe they're both 15 at this point. Um, and it's been interesting too, because uh, it's, it's a romance, so it's going to have a happy ending. And yes, the second season does have a happy ending which is great. It actually has a confession, which is lovely. And, you know, and the fact that the mangas continue beyond that, I'm like, I like that if this was the original intention of the mangaka in the first place to say, this is what I want to do with this show, then I get it. Like, I understand. I'm like, yes, okay, that's cool. If it wasn't and they found themselves, like, if they found themselves like, oh my God, my characters are moving in this direction anyway, then I'm like, good on you, right? For finding that actually this, the story leads you in this direction. It's um, it's it's really sweet. I uh, and the, God, the songs are all good. Like the first season opening is probably the better of them all, I think. But the second season opening uh, really goes with the uh, with the um, it goes with the um, uh, the animation and stuff as well. the The first season opening animation is wonderful. Um, but I'm glad that at least that however they how they did the second season opening that they also made a really great opening for that. It's really pretty. There's you know lots of like lots of detail, lots of shadows and highlighting, and lots of that going on too. Um, and the uh, uh, the second season ending, I don't remember the sec the first season ending, uh, and probably I will when I finish doing this. But the second season ending song is really great, and that into that I would watch it every single time. I believe I did watch the first one too. But anyway, there. Um, uh, the music's been fantastic, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I like that um, for all the kind of weird uh, little tropey bits that kind of get involved here, like, oh, you know, uh, Kyotaro has a friend who's like a, the total kind of like 14-year-old pervy dude um, uh, to the point where he's like, all right, guys, we know that the girls are having a boob battle. 
uh, in the in the other hot springs next door because that's what happens. So we have to have a dick battle, and he stands up and he's like, "Check it out!" And they're like, "Oh yeah, Jesus, yeah, good for you, dude." And it's like, "Yeah, check me out." And it's like, "Oh my God, yeah, good for you," and and I'm like weirdly that reminds me of being younger and being like which who out there did anyone get their hairs yet am i the last one surely not i won't worry i won't think about it too much but wait what if i am the first one like that kind of idea that <laughs> that reminds me of that of that time and i'm like and not yeah it's um it has a bit of the taste of that. You have to remember these kids are still in middle school. And so the awkwardness is even more enjoyable because it's like, oh, they're not 16, 17, 18 years old or whatever. They are really trying to, uh, they're really trying to like, um, uh, uh, really dealing with all of this, like churning emotion and stuff. So it's a lot of fun. So anyway, um, I, I loved it. And I think that if you do like rom-coms, if you can get past the first little bit um, of the like, oh, I don't like the initial part of this premise, you find that it actually turns into uh, into a into a rom com, and it's a lot of fun. And we'll move on. Uh, Butchigiri. I did not watch this. Hard fight Vanguard Divinez. I didn't watch that either. Uh, Chiyu Maho no Machigata Tsukaikata. I didn't watch that either. Maybe there's just something about people like. When you see guys in white school uniforms, that I'm just like, oh, I know this is not going to go the way I want. I don't know. Dosankyo, Dosankyo, I keep wanting to say kyo, but Dosanko, Dosanko Garu, wa Namaremen, Namaremen Koi. I'm halfway through this. I'm, I read this, I am reading this. Um, it's, it is definitely like, it's definitely horny. But it's not, it's not, there's no ecchi tag for a reason, right? There's no H tag in here for a reason. It's, it's, um, God, just boobs, you know, like it's that kind of thing. This girl's hot and in the middle of winter, she's still wearing uh, something that gives her cleavage, right? Oh, the other girl's also hot too. And we get to see her in her bra at one point. And I'm like, yeah, everything about it feels like, hey, hey, read this dudes because the hot chicks with the boobs and everything but also it's a it's a um uh it's not horny in the way that it's like we're gonna get like dozens of panty shots and a harem anime thing or whatever this is just literally about a guy who can't make up his mind about what he wants and that the guy who can't make up his mind is the mangaka That's the thing that bugs me is that um, it is uh, I don't manga could be a man or a woman, but whoever they are, they literally it really does feel like they can't make up their mind about the main character. And I'm like, yeah, the the manga cause not the manga could definitely wanted to be like, well, hey, here. So I'm going to ruin this for you because why not? Hey, you you are supposed to like any of the three of these girls who all like you back. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Fuyuki confess to you first and you're going to misunderstand her because you're an idiot, which is going to make all the fans hate you. Then we're going to have each of the other girls in turn confess to you and you realize that you fucked up the main character because I don't even remember his name. Um, you realize you fucked up because, oh, wait, maybe girls actually do like me. Um, and then the, the characters, the, the fans are going to hate you even more. But now you have to go through a long arc of of trying to figure out your response to her thing. And then we see the setup that it's like, oh, it's coming that we know she's next. And all the fans are like, yep, she's the next one. And then she confesses. And then it's and he's like, no, it's not who you that I like. And then it's her. And we have to spend multiple chapters setting it up so that it gets all the way to the to a certain point. We can churn out the fucking chapters and set up a whole thing to have a really amazing whatever. And it's funny because when I watch them kiss in the manga, I'm like, I don't even want to see this anymore. I don't think that I don't want to see it. I don't need any sort of confirmation that you like each other. I don't care. But the thing that is interesting, and I am still reading it, is that they are getting a chance to go on dates and do stuff. It's not a manga that ended after this point. My concern is that we're going to get someone who comes in at a certain... because. I, 
it, it's like someone else will come in to uh, muck up the waters. And I think at that point, I'm probably just going to say, I know how this goes and I'm just going to kill this. So I'm not going to read it anymore. Um, and yeah, forcing the triangle. Thank you, Bitecaster. That is a great way to look at it. Uh, maybe that's even the name of the trope as far as, as far as it is, but I'm like, it's nice. They, they have now they're dating and they've went to the Sapporo snow festival. And I'm liking this also because it's all based in Hokkaido. So whenever we get to hear about Hokkaido culture, I'm like, this is great. I want to go there at some point and see this. And so I'm, I'm hearing a lot of things. That's why I'm also reading some, some manga that's based in Okinawa. Cause I want to go there too. And so it's nice to like get a little bit of information about stuff that goes on over there and remember that. So anyway. I am watching it, but I'm on episode seven and I'm going to like, I'm piecing it out, not because I like it, <laughs> but I'm piecing it out more just as I might even just stop because I'm like, I don't know if I need to put myself through what I kind of went through earlier. I don't even know if they're going to speed it up or not. So anyway, let's move on. On the other hand, Dungeon Meshi. And we're getting two core of it. Isn't that great? 14 of 24 is airing in three days. This is fantastic. Um, Ryoko Kui, I think is the name of the mangaka. Uh, and they are, um, they have done some other stuff. Like if you read manga online anywhere, um, go look up the author. They have done a lot of other things and uh, they're very fun. They're very interesting. Um, and Dungeon Meshi, I get a lot of my manga rec recommendations from hanging out on the anime forum on Something Awful. And uh, generally, if somebody recommends something there and I go read it and I get about three or four chapters in and I like it too, then I, you know, I did right, right? Um, I don't think I've ever had anyone recommend something where I was completely like, oh, I can't, oh, why would it, oh. You can just kind of tell from the way somebody talks about something. It's like, this is about some people who... Uh, need to go into a dungeon and they need to go in fast so they can't bring food with them so they decide that they'll just eat the monsters but nobody really wants to eat the monsters uh, so this is just the first time anyone's doing this and I'm like I've never heard of this this dungeon crawling but it's also cooking manga sure why not I'll let's see how this goes and I was like yeah this is um this is top notch and trigger <laughs> uh trigger gonna trigger there are those scenes where Trigger shows off that it's like, we love traditional animation. We love that. the We love the rubber banding and we love the the frenetic style and we love that kind of thing. And we want to get opportunities to show that stuff off. And, um, and they do. Like, it doesn't happen a lot, but there are battles. And so sometimes there is going to be a lot of that. And it's, it's like, this is really good. Um, it's really great that they've gotten to make this. So, um, now, on the other hand, Heather doesn't want to watch this because she doesn't like the idea of watching uh, things get butchered and then turned into food and having people eat them. And I'm like, mm, bah, fair, fair. So she will not be into this. Uh, and that's fine. Um, I really, really love it. I'm glad that they're doing this. And my hope is that we're going to get more of it even past 24 because I know that people are about to get very, very upset <laughs> at this anime if they haven't read the manga yet. They're going to get so mad. So let's keep moving. Uh, Gekkai Elise, or Dr. Elise, or Surgeon Elise, depending on how you want to come at this. Um, this, let's ignore the boys for a minute. Um, this is the one she's supposed to marry. This is the one who's the doctor and the whatever. Uh, this, don't worry about that guy. And this is the guy that she was friends with in her first life. That's also the third prince. He's the crown prince. Meh, it doesn't matter. Um, this is great, but it, uh, for like, just, you're kind of like fun, drop in, watch a thing, but it's also frustrating. So it kind of just made it good. Like I was like, this was good. I had a good Heather and I watched it together. We had a good time watching it. Um, this is the double Sakai. This is where Elise uh, dies because she was a she was a terrible girl, so that she has to die. It revolution, right? In this life, she comes back as uh, Aoi Takamoto in present day, present time, <laughs> and she has a. Um, uh, she decides that she's going to become a doctor. Uh, there's inspiration for that reason, and she basically becomes like the blackjack of her world, essentially. Um, and then she, uh, she's on an airplane and it crashes and she lives and then she dies. Watch it if you care. Uh, and she goes back 10 years before her death, um, back to when she was Elise. So she remembers all this stuff and she has all this medical knowledge and she's like, oh my God, I can do a thing now. 
But it's so hard. The thing that brought me out of this so much is that as the as the show moves on, it feels like they don't really know or they're not properly like I shouldn't say they we aren't given a really good idea of what time period in fictional Europe this is all happening. Um, and that's my main complaint is I'm like, boy, when, when you, th because there's no magic or anything, which uh, great, awesome, love it. But there's, when are we? Like, I, I'm like, I know this isn't supposed to be real Europe. The name of the king is like Middleschnauf von Ritten, uh, what is it again? It's like von Romanoff. And I'm like, Sure, whatever. I that's exactly how names work. And and I'm like, I don't know where or when this is all happening. You have carriages, but you also have uh steel scalpels with razor sharp edges, and you have anesthetic equipment that have like rubber masks and stuff, but um you also and you have pistols, uh, but you're it it the the period of time that is all still very monarchical and um and it doesn't feel like victorian ages but is it like the 1850s uh but if it's the 1900s then wouldn't i see actual cars and it's like i'm just gonna take it's a pastiche of like this whole era and some things advance some things not hey you know like um, I know, I, as a doctor, I know what a pulmonary embolism is, but as a doctor, why did you stab that woman in the throat to open up her airway? Why would you do that in a big hurry? That's crazy to me that the tracheotomy is a thing, right? And, and I'm like, I, it just feels like, because m medicine is so important to the hallmark of this thing that I'm like, either they did a ton of research to know exactly what the knowledge was at the time, or they did no research whatsoever to find out what the medical knowledge was at the time. And so it lets me feel very out of place because I'm like, I only have a smattering of knowledge from all the stuff that you watch, like on like period pieces and whatnot. It was just like, this left me so, uh, so it was a good, it was good. It was entertainment. It was, it wasn't my favorite of the season, but it was entertainment. It was nice to watch something with my wife. Gekkan Moso Kagaku. We started watching monthly delusional magazine, and I think I fell asleep for half of the second episode and never went back and watched more of it. I have not had an urge to go back and watch the second the second episode again to try to fill myself in. The only thing I like about this show that really appealed to me right off the bat is the dog. And if you watch the opening sequence or whatever, you'll know what I mean. We'll move on. High Card Season 2, didn't watch it. Hikari no O, second season, didn't watch it. Hime-sama, Gouman no Jikan desu. I'm reading this, again, also on a recommendation. I don't generally find stuff without having someone recommend it to me. This is great fun. Uh, the, the manga itself was fun, and they actually really do capture that kind of fun in the series. So I am impressed that they've pulled it off. You have to be willing to go along with the premise. Um, there are people out there who surmise that it's this is more of this isn't really that the Hell Horde is, is holding the princess uh, and the princess and commander of the Third Legion of the Imperial Army. It, it it is the same joke over and over. You gotta like that, and if you don't like that, like the whole point is to tell the same joke over and over until you get to a point where you don't have to tell the joke anymore because you know that it's coming and you know that it's there. So you then you can twist however you want and do other things with the with the, um, with the the series. So if you don't like the idea that it's going to be the same joke over and over, you're going to be left cold. But if you are like, right, I know that's what's going on here, then that becomes shorthand and you can concentrate on all the other things that I think make it fun. Um, it's... Uh, the, the premise that I've heard posts is that I don't think this is her being taken captive. I think this is some sort of weird exchange program between the Hell Horde and the Imperial Army for some reason. It's very weird. Uh, and yes, the Hell Lord is top tier dad. Uh, part of what makes this show so fun 
is kind of the subversion of all the characters uh, to not what you would expect in the bog standard whatever. Feels more like a more modern take on what you would see and how things. Plus, also the hell the hell hordes world is just modern day Japan. That's that's what I I love even more about it. For all the for all the medieval kind of whatever whatever's going on, it's just literally just modern day Japan. I I really like this show. We'll move on. Uh, Ishida didn't watch it. Jakuchara Tomozaki Kun second stage. Talked to Heather about it because we watched the first season and we decided that we both didn't remember enough about the first season to care about what happens in the second season, so we just moved on. Uh, Kekkon Yubiwa Monogatari, didn't watch it. Kingdom fifth season, didn't watch it. Kijitsu no Warumono-san, or Mr. Villain's Day Off. I'm reading the manga. Doesn't get updated that often. I thought I would enjoy then watching the series. I'm stuck on like episode six and seven, much like uh, Hakata Girls are uh, fucking hot, whatever the name of that series is. Um, I'm stuck on episode seven of this as well. I'm really kind of like, I feel like I've hit a wall with it. Uh, maybe, because it's a healing anime a little bit, but it's also a goof uh, as well. And I guess that um, the anime, it's one of those things where I'm like, the manga is easier to digest because it is like 17 pages or however many pages is in a chapter. And so you feel like you're you're taking it in like small bites. Because um, sometimes you want a meal that's small bites, right? And that's how I feel this works best. If this was like 24 shorts, uh, that would probably be more fun. Um, I do hate when that happens sometimes, but it's fluffy and it's nice. I can't say anything bad about it. I just find that I'm like, I'm not... I haven't been in the mood for several months to kind of bump into this. So I'm just kind of, it's in a holding pattern for me right now. Uh, Rupu, Nana, maybe? Shichikaime no Akiyaku Rejo wa Moto Tekikoku de Jiyu Kimi Mana Hana Yome Sekatsu o Mankitsu Suru. If I could ever do a Norio Wakamoto impression, uh, I should work on that because why not? Why not utilize the limited time of, I have on Earth to try to actually do his voice? Because uh, I would love to do that whenever I'm announcing these things. Heather and I watched this. We really enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun, actually. Um, it has a couple arcs, arcs, three episode, two episode little things where it's like, mm, don't know how I feel about the, the, that thing. Like the... Um, the Crown Prince's younger brother, Theodore. Uh, that whole thing, I'm like, I don't know if I know it. It's too, meh, but whatever. Um, but this is uh, this was kind of fun. Uh, the idea of this girl is like on her seventh part of of, a, of this constant time loop that she's in, and she's now ended up with the guy who started the war that has ended up uh, inadvertently or directly advertently killing her in the other six times that she's lived. So um, she's now going to, she, and in it, she just basically in the seventh one, she's like, I'm what? Like it just twist of fate. Now she's going to end up married to the guy who's, was going to cause this like seven years hence or whatever. Um, it's, uh, I love, and as a premise, I think it's a really compelling premise. Uh, as an execution, it's pretty good. I feel like there's probably way more to it that where we don't get out of this. If they made another core of it, I think we'd watch it. I think we both want to see how it kind of, how she helps to change the future. Because I think that's what you want, is you want to see, like, can she change her future and can she change everybody else's future as a result? The ending of the, the ending of this season is when I saw what was happening in the back of my mind, I was like, this isn't, it's not going to end this way, is it? Oh, it's not going to end this way. I know enough about Chinese history to know how this goes. This is going to, this is, yeah, I know it's about, yeah, it ended the way I thought it was going to end. All right, well, whatever. So, yeah, it's, um, uh, <laughs> you will see it coming and it will frustrate you that it took so long to pay off, but eh, whatever. <laughs> Anime, right? It's moving on. Maho Shoujo ni Akogarete. Uh, I did not watch this. Majo to Yaju. Didn't watch this. Mashuru, Kami Shinkaksha Koho Senbatsu Shikenhen. Didn't watch this either. It's the second season of a thing that I did not originally watch. Hope you enjoyed it. Mato Sehe no Slave. 
Didn't watch that either. Meiji Gekken 1874. I know we talked about it, I think, at one point, but I I, we decided, I decided not to anyway. Metallic Rouge dropped it after the first episode. If you liked it, great. I'm glad you enjoy a thing. But by the end of that first episode, Heather and I were both like, y no, no, no. And just kind of walked on. Maybe this is what Bones does. Maybe this is kind of their stock in trade. I don't know. But yeah, I was just like, I don't think I care. So we just kind of rolled on. Um, Momochi-san, Chino, Ayakashi, Oji. I'm going to be honest with you. I forgot this was even a thing that I put on my list. We dropped this after the first episode and promptly forgot about it. Um, Ninja Kamui. Didn't watch this. Didn't I don't remember seeing this last time. Anyway, I like this over hiding from his violent past in rural America with his family. Anyway, didn't watch that. Uh, Oredake, level up, Naken. Uh, didn't watch this. Oroko na tenshi wa akuma to odoru. Um, I think we watched the first episode of this and decided after the first episode, it was like, this didn't really grab me in a way that I was interested in. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we just, the the angel and the devil, and it was just like, I don't like the how this plays out. It's like, whatever. So we just moved on. Uh, Pon Tomichi, we watched the first episode of this. Both decided that we weren't that interested in seeing how it played out. I liked kind of the setting of it. I didn't like the, I guess, the attitude of it. So, yeah, just kind of walked away from it. Saijaku uh, tema wa gomi hiroi no tabi wo hajimemashita. If this was a video game, I'd play the hell out of this. This looks like a lot of fun uh, in a way. Just kind of like you're moving from town to town on the maps. Um, you're like collecting stuff out of the garbage to find things that are like... Um, this is about the weakest tamer starts a journey to pick up trash, like picking through the garbage and stuff to find things. Um, the, it, this is, yeah, this, as people have been saying, this is adorable. This is cute. It really was. And, um, and it's, people had said too, it's like, man, it's so tough. Like it's, uh, as Sir Spade says, it starts off on a brutal note. It really does. Like the first episode or two, even the three are like, like it's really tough to deal with but it's meant to be a story of growth uh and about like you know meeting new people and making new friends and that kind of thing too and and i'm like as a game as a like a as a as um travel and moving around and doing stuff like that and your whole thing is you can't really if you go into town you might get nabbed by somebody or there's like dangers out there but maybe you can find ways to defend yourself in other ways and 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 i was like yeah i i really like this this was fun the the music, uh, even too, like the opening theme was, we'd skip it most times. I'm not always one who watch every opening theme or ending theme. Um, occasionally, I'd let it play out. Sometimes I wouldn't. I liked the song well enough, but not like I wanted to hear it all the time. Same with the ending theme. I was like, I like the song well enough. Not something I'd want to listen to that often. But um, yeah, I didn't think it made them bad, right? There are songs that are like that. Uh, and this this was fun. I We, we liked this both. I would watch more of this. If there's, I think there's maybe just something about little kids getting to tame slimes. Like I've liked all, even the um, By the Grace of the Gods, which is about a 40-year-old man in a kid's body taming slimes and, and then doing stuff with them. I was like, I like that too. Um, so maybe there's something about that that I like. That appeals to me, the idea that I, I could tame a slime then. I could do that kind of thing. You know what they say. It's like if you ask 40% of, uh, of middle-aged men, hey, could you tame a slime in an uncaring wilderness? They 80% of them would say, yeah, absolutely, I could do that. Moving on. Saikyo tank no meikyu koryaku taryoku qqqq no rare skill mochi tank. Yusha party o tsuiho tsareru. We watched this and dropped it, I think. I think we got to a point that we dropped it. Yeah, we hit a point where we were like, we're done watching this, I think. Um... It just felt, um, it felt so goddamn generic. Uh, the fact that, like, by the first episode or the second episode, they they were like, "Here's all your potential wives," and I was like, "Oh God, really? We did that? 
more wives. I'm like, oh, don't keep doing that. And yeah, as I forgot about that point, as mentioned in the in the chat, when the twins kiss to unlock superpowers, it feels ick. And I'm like, I think that might have been the episode where we're like, we're done. Oh, that's good. We finally know why we're finished watching this. This is so weird. But yeah. Anyway, I mean, Christ, they should have just given him appraisal. Let's move on. Uh, Sasaki to Pichan, or as everyone's been seeing it as Sasaki and Peeps, I'm sure. I'd like Pichan better as that, but I think there's the whole like, oh, peeing, uh, what, I, whatever. This is a lot. Um, this is a lot. It's so hard for me to, like, we've had a good enough time watching it, but it has felt like, it has felt like, um, it's felt like two sheets of paper with some gravel in between and you're doing this with it. It's not smooth. It's not it, like the getting over the, uh, like getting to the point where you're like, do you want to watch this tonight? It's like, yeah, I get, I guess, I guess, you know, grind, 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 grind. It feels like you have, a, it's a harder time to feel excited about watching it. And then we watch it. We're like, oh yeah, it's a good episode. Um, but it has, I mean, when I called the fact that Hoshizaki was 16 years old, despite dressing like, like she's 24 or something, I was just like, I was like, oh, but she's 16. Like just at, they were out having that dinner at that one episode. And I turned to Heather and said, she's 16 years old. And she's like, whatever. And then she drops that bomb. And, and I was like, I almost did a lap around the house. I was so, I was like, fucking called it. Like, I was just like, I knew this, like. You could tell going in, I'm like, every girl in this series is 16 years old. You know that they're all 16 years old. And I'm like, is this a light novel? I forgot. Oh, look, actually it is. Mm, that makes sense. That makes sense that in a light novel that the 40-year-old protagonist is going to be surrounded by 16-year-old girls and not interested in any of them because it makes them a good person. That's what the save the cat trope is about, I guess. save the cat until it's older anyway i'm just kind of this is this has been fun and interesting but also tropey as shit and it feels like it doesn't know what it wants to be and because of that we have to think that's on purpose that's like the 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 novelists uh the author must have thought what if i wrote all of it together and i'm like okay well if that's satire it is indistinguishable from what is this, it is satirizing because I cannot tell. He's OP. He, he's got all this stuff going on for him. And I'm like, but what is it? What, what are you satirizing? Like, where is the satire in this? I don't see it because it's just stuff happening. And if it's meant to be completely overwhelming, I'm, I'm just waiting for him to like put up his hand and be like, stop. And the only thing I can think is what the payoff to this is supposed to be is that Pichan is the one who has caused all of this somehow that he he was from this other world and he was a he's the star major or whatever and has this immense power and he's decided that he wants to make this man's life interesting for some reason he thinks it's it's a good idea to do that and he's the one who's causing all this stuff to happen and yeah doodles is doodles says the only thing that's missing is giant robots and ninjas and it's like if that starts to make its way into it, then I think we'll know. Like, I think at that point we'll know it's like, oh, this is completely like out of left field. Um, and that will make sense finally, that like this is what's been going on the whole time. Uh, then how you end it is Sasaki like wakes up out of the VR game that he doesn't know he's been playing for the last 15 years. Uh, or this feels like it's 15 years, but he's only been in there 25 minutes kind of deal. And then he relates what's gone on and he goes back to his corporate job or something like that. That's that's how I think this ends because it it is it is fluffy as shit. It's not really saying anything. <laughs> Moving on. Sengoku Yoko. Did, didn't watch that. Shaman King Flowers. Did not watch that. Shin no Nakama Janai to Yusha no Party o slow life um well I have all this ready to watch and haven't and I think it's because the manga uh is or at least the scanlations of of this 
are behind. So if season two skips a ton of the manga, then then yeah, maybe that's the problem, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, and I don't know if I want to, because the, the, where the manga is at right now, which is at the, basically the, the, the scanlation of it, is at the very end of the big fight uh, where Ruti is, um, uh, kills Ares. Hey, let's, I don't give a shit about spoilers at this point, it seems. Um, then I'm like, okay, then, or maybe she didn't, somebody did anyway, um, but Ruti's having the whole hero sword moment. I'm like, I've been reading that. I'm like, I just want to follow that around. Uh, and that's all first season stuff as, as being said here. And I'm just like, okay, well then I, maybe I want to watch this. Maybe I don't, I don't really get it. Um, and I found, cause I'm like, do I like the manga? Well, the second season of this is coming out. Maybe I'll sit down and watch it and, and kind of get ahead. And I've never felt the pull to do it. And I'm starting to wonder if I actually like the manga or if I'm just reading it because of inertia. And that is making me question some things about maybe I need to drop the manga and maybe I need to drop this. But I did watch all of this. I also watched the last episode of this today before showing up. Snack Basue. Um, this is an adult's gag manga is all this is. Um, and it's fun and irritating kind of an equal measure. Uh, it does that thing where it's like, Hey, let's drop, um, let's drop a whole bunch of references to things, both new and old. Uh, for example, we're going to get some dragon quest references and final fantasy references in here because why not? Uh, every episode ends with a song from the 70s and 80s, like an Enka song from the 70s and 80s being sung karaoke style. And what's great is that everyone's singing it, like all the VAs who are like the seiyu who are all singing them, just sing them like normal people who like to sing would sing them. They don't, there's no real like, um, none of them are any, they're, they're not pop idols. And maybe some of them are in real life, but... Uh, I, I don't know that if they have their own albums and shit that have gone out, but they just sing them like a normal person would sing. Yeah. Manual tune, no auto tune. And it's kind of great. Um, it is, I'm sure pretty impenetrable. If you're not, if you don't like gag manga to begin with, uh, if you don't kind of like the, you know, uh, adults in bars talking to each other, but making like dirty jokes and stuff like that all the time. If you don't like those kind of things, um, and if you're not, maybe, I don't know, maybe if you're not a 40 or 50 year old in Japan, you might not enjoy this either. I thought it was all right. I, I was, I didn't know what it was going to turn into when I, when an after the first episode was like, man, I don't know if I like this or not, but I'll watch another episode. And I was like, well, I like it well enough. And then as it's come out, I've been like, you know, I like every week I do like to watch this because I do like to see what it is they're going to be doing every single time. You get to know all the, you know, admittedly just very unappealing looking characters <laughs> and you're just like, yeah. That's what so and so's like. That's what so and so's like. Yeah, it's a, you know, you're like, okay, cool, whatever. So it was, it was fun. I had a good time. Sokushi cheat ga saikyo sugite isekai no yatsura ga maru de aite ni naranai desu ga. So, yeah. Um, didn't watch that. Scene Duality Noir Part 2. I think this is on like. I thought I saw this on like Disney Plus or something. Didn't watch that. Tsukiga Michibiku Isekai Dochu second season. I didn't watch the first season, so you know, I, if you enjoyed it, please enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed more of it. Udusei Atsura 2022 second season. So, um, I didn't watch this. Um, I think because I'm waiting on some, I don't really know. It's like, uh, I know, I think it's just kind of like, uh, it was in my, it was in my up next of things to watch, but then after like a little while stuff falls off my up watch and I never really went back and watched it. So I, uh, yeah, I, I haven't, and I, and I want to, and I've been meaning to, so I just want to sit down and actually, and actually get through this. All right, moving on. Wonderful Precure. I didn't watch that. Yokso Jitsuroku Shijo Shugi no Kyoshitsu e, third season. Didn't watch the other ones. So um, moving on. Yubisaki to Renren. Oh my god, this is this is really good. This is a very sappy uh, romance. 
Um, and it's kind of it's kind of lovely and sweet, and it's um, it's called a sign of affection. Uh, Yuki is deaf, uh, or ha at least uh, has almost no hearing, so she still wears hearing aids uh, to amplify whatever. But she can't she can't hear people talk. I think she can just basically like register noise through her ears or whatever. It is. Um, Man, it is like uh, this is a this is a style of series I don't watch that often because I feel like this is not meant for me to watch. I think this is this is a very different demographic that is supposed to watch this, uh, and I and I like romances, right? Uh, this is a college age romance as well. Um, there's just something about. Itsuomi, the the main uh, the main male character, um, that everything about him is just like, I feel like he is he is drawn or made to be, the absolute like just mysteriously appealing boyfriend, um, and then everything about <laughs> I forget his name, damn it, Aoki Kun, uh, Oki Kun, everything about him is meant to be like. The childhood friend that, because he's the childhood friend who's supposed to be the boyfriend, uh, but never actually overcomes his own bullshit um, to get there. Uh, but he seems like more of the, if if Itsuomi kun, oh Shikun, thank you. If Itsuomi kun didn't exist, eventually this pairing would work out. But he'd have to get over a lot of bullshit and try to convince her otherwise. Whereas she meets him and just like falls for him immediately, and he kind of from the beginning likes her and figures out pretty fast that he actually likes her a lot. Um, and yeah, I mean, Kyoru, I think makes a good point. The way they draw lips on guys gives away who this show is for, I think. And I'm like, yeah, I think you might be right. So I think that's the thing is I'm like, this is just the, all the boys are set up to be this way. This it's very classical shoujo. Thank you. Uh, uh, ben Obi. Um, and and it is great. Like I'm like I would watch more of this. They're you know they date they they date early on. Like uh, this is not meant to be a romance. It's supposed to string you out over a long period of time. They start dating. the The tension is more in the uh, the second degree relationships that they like relationships that they have with other people and how that stuff uh, grows and turns out. And also in um, the language barrier of a fashion. Because what's really cool, I think, is that Itsuomi is very much, he's into languages. And I think that's what's fascinating about Yuki is that, you know, here is this, here's this girl who, you know, we can communicate, we can write things back and forth to each other in this way. But if I talk to her, she can't hear me, but she can read my lips, but she can't talk back to me. She has to type through her, her text, but we can both learn sign language. And, um, and I've just really enjoyed watching that too, because it, it made me realize I'm like, right. Sign language is largely, it's not about, um, this is my understanding of how it, like sign language works, is that it's about communicating all the important points and stringing them together in a way that creates your senses, right? And I'm like, right, when you do like us, when you do, um, um, I can't remember most of the things, there was like, when you do this uh, to mean more, right? Um, when you're doing that, I'm like, that's a, that's a gesture that's meant to communicate an entire word. Well, that's literally what kanji's for, right? It's meant to be a, a one thing that communicates the, the, the whole meaning. And that's also what the word more is for. It's not just like, we don't read a thing and go M-O-R-E. We recognize, eventually we recognize the word more, and that's what we recognize it to be. And I'm like, right, sign language has this, um, uh, uh, has that same kind of thing of like, the concept it's communicating and how it communicates. And then also like, depending on how you, I, I read a thing recently that said that, um, was it, was it this? The way people who sign uh, do things like puns or rhymes depends on the position of their hands when they're signing the words because, or the words, the concepts, when they're, when they're doing a certain thing, if they change how their hands are oriented or do something else and they do that to evoke another thing like another concept that's how they're making a pun or that's how they're rhyming and i'm like oh that's so fascinating i didn't think of it that way that but that's how that works it's like when we will slant rhyme things in the english language it's like two words don't rhyme but we'll say them somewhat the same and and i was like there's so much of 
that. And then that made me think that JSL can't be like ASL. Like they might share, they might even share a lot of similarities. I don't know. But, but sign language itself can't be a universal language because if you understand Japanese, then the, the you re, if you can read it and write it, then you understand how that grammar structure works. And if you're trying to tell people things in sign, then you're probably doing it based on the grammar structure, the subject, object, verb, more than you would be doing it in ASL, right? Because maybe in ASL, if you understand English, then wouldn't it be coming out like that, subject, verb, object? I don't know, but it did make me think about that. And I'm like, that is really interesting that maybe these things aren't cross compatible at all. This was a really good series. I had a lot of fun watching it. I would love it if they make more of it. Um, uh, I don't know if they will. It's probably more of like, you should go read the manga now. And I probably will go read the manga now. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, is JSL also conveyed an Osama ranking, uh, ranking of kings? Uh, in as much, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know JSL enough and I don't know enough about how that was because this, that show was not about that. That show was, uh, you know, it wasn't about a means of communication. It was about other things. They were just kind of showing some stuff off, but yeah. So anyway, I will, but that is the thing for you to think about. Maybe it's the thing I'm going to think about. There's people in, in the chat right now that are talking about how ASL, uh, doesn't have similar sentence structure. Signed English does. So ASL is technically, it is its own language. ASL and British Sign Language, uh, there is a split there apparently. Um, so yeah, ASL split off of, uh, it split off from French Sign Language. I didn't know that. This is fascinating. Um, anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to move on. <laughs> I'll be here too long, and that's not what this show is about. But this is a thing that you might find interesting too. And I'm going to read all these things as they're coming across. Yuki Bakuhatsu Bang Bravern, or Bang Brave Bang Bravern, or Brave Bang Bravern, as people have been saying. Uh, I did not watch this. Um, I kind of figured from the beginning, I'm like, oh, this is probably going to be a yaoi show. I have a feeling. Just kind of in the back of my mind, I thought that. Um, apparently, people ha really love it. You can see in chat that they love it. Uh, so go ahead and watch it. Uh, I'm not really into mecha shows by and large anyway. Uh, and so I'm like, I don't think this was ever going to be my collection of things that I, genres that I wanted to watch. So, um, but yeah, everyone loves this. They love it so much. So if you, if any of this, if you're reading this or you're hearing me talk about it, you're seeing what they're writing in chat, it's like, this appeals to you. You should go watch it because I don't think it's a bad show at all because everyone seems to love it so, so much. So we'll, we'll move on. And I've already moved past that. Um, I have seven minutes left before the hour is up, which means we're going to get to the end of this because that's that was the TV stuff. Now we're into shorts. Cho Hutsuken Shiba Densetsu. Didn't watch that. Harimaware Koinu. Koinu. I uh, didn't watch that. Meito Isekai no Yu. I'm not even going to bother reading the whole thing. I watched the first episode and this one was like, I'm done. Like, it got across everything it wanted to do in the first episode. As far as I was concerned, I'm like, I don't give a shit about any of this. <laughs> Hey, hot springs and naked girls and this and that and whatever. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I really don't care. It did not feel fun to me. So maybe it was fun for other people, but it did not feel fun for me to sit there and watch it. So we'll move on. Uh, Saikyo Ozukan, The Ultimate Battles. I so didn't watch that. Um, uh, Sakuretsu Amabie Hime, season three. Didn't watch that. Um... Looks interesting. One shot anime. Anyway, uh, Science Sadu uh, collab MBS original short anime Dai Sak Sen. Uh, so this is just making Science Sadu making shorts about stuff. I didn't see any of those. Shinobanai Crypto Ninja Sakuya Nimaki. Didn't watch that. Uh, Yamishibai 12. Didn't watch that. Beyblade X. Didn't watch that. Captain Tsubasa Season 2. Didn't watch that. Dog Signal. Didn't watch that. Kusuriya no Hitori Goto. God, look at, if you looked at the <laughs> tags that I put in, in this, you know my feelings about Kusuriya no Hitori Goto or the Apothecary Diaries. Um, again, a show that I got Heather to sit down for and watch. It was the, when it showed up, it was the first thing we watched every night. This is, um, this was fantastic. It is getting a second season. And, and well, it should. Now, you're going to be like, oh my God, Beach Source, light novel. It says right up there, light novel. How could that possibly... 
it's good and you can read either manga if you want i would read the one that looks like this one there's another one that is drawn slightly different and it's okay um it is different to see uh, but if you want to read the manga and get way ahead of where they are in the anime, definitely look at that manga. It This is so fun and interesting and, you know, hmm, and, you know, like chin stroking. And it's it's just great. Uh, and I can't remember who they picked to play Mau Mau. Um, she does an excellent job. She is a very well-known voice actress, and I forget who it is. But uh, she does an excellent job. Um, and... It, the music is great. Like the beginnings and the endings uh, of uh, through the whole thing. I've re- oh, Yuki, thank you, Doodles. Um, the beginning, the, the the op and the ED, great. Um, it's it's so fun. Uh, I like the first opening better than the second opening. My big my big problem <laughs> is that the second opening makes it look like it's supposed to be a romance, and I'm like. Not yet. Not yet. Do not, don't walk around with those, don't put those stones on its shoulders, right? It's like, this is not going to be a romance yet. This is not supposed to be anything that turns into romance yet. That's not who Mau Mau is. I don't like that. <laughs> You're making it feel too much like that's what's supposed to be happening. You're kind of, yeah, save it for next season. Absolutely. That's what they should have done is saved it for next season. Um, Rourke Nine asks me, and I guess maybe everybody else, would you recommend reading the manga for watching this one is fine to watch first? Just watch it now. Just just watch it now. It it captures so much about the manga. There will still be missing bits that will be in the manga. Um, if you have time to watch something, it's very, very pretty. It's very well realized. Great. Good job, Toho Animation. Um, uh, definitely do that. Just, just get in on it whatever way you want to get in on that. If you feel more like you're like, boy, I'd like to actually just have like a sit quietly and read something, read the manga. If you want to sit quietly and just read like a translated light novel or you can read Japanese, I guess, then go take that in. This is award-winning. Like the manga is award-winning for a reason. Like this is very appealing and it is very easy to follow and it's entertaining as hell to watch. And there is, you have to also kind of like uh, court shenanigans, right? You have to kind of like court politics because that's in there. And you have to love the fact that Mau Mau thinks all the court politics stuff is complete bullshit, but she has to obey it. And I think maybe as, that might be how the manga helps you as well, and maybe the light novel helps you as well. It puts you more in the, helps you understand more the mindset that um, she knows what her place is, and she knows how she's supposed to interact with people. And as frustrating as she finds that stuff, she realizes what she has to do to just basically keep a low profile or keep her own skin. Um too many people I found watch the anime. I go to, again to the anime uh, thread for this on something awful. So many people watch the anime and were just like, I don't understand why this girl doesn't just give in and kiss the cute boy that she thinks is cute. And I'm like, what is the matter with you? What are you, you said you've watched the series up till now. What have you not noticed about what she's like? And they throw out, they throw out all sorts of words to describe a person at that point. Oh, she's, She's like this, right? And it's like, have you seen how Jin Shi acts around people? Have you seen how she reacts to how she how he acts when he sees her when 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 she sees him acting like that? How she reacts? Why do you think that is given where she grew up and the people she spent her time around? What does that put you in mind of? Like I'm like this doesn't need to be it's not deep. This show is not deep in the way that you need to be thinking so much about stuff, but God, you need to like, you need to think about what the motivation of all the characters are. So yeah, as as Dogma says, the text is not even subtext. The text is he believes she is his toy, and she knows that she is his toy. Now, she doesn't know how he treats his toys, and also she doesn't know if maybe how he thinks of her is different or growing beyond that we don't know that yet um and there is also that there's the very facile interpretation of boys like it when a girl isn't interested in them or girls like it when a boy is interested in them right when when every other person 
that I am trying to attract loves me and then I cannot attract the other person, then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, well, now I've chase that like that i mean that's a very that's a trope and it's very facile and we and we understand that and it's like right but if that's what you think is happening here that's not really what is all happening here so and it helps that then as um things happen in the manga and things happen in the anime they make more of an emotional impact i think on you because that you are brought in understanding these things about how stuff works in the show so it's um you can you can understand it on the face of just being a I'm done with my one hour so we'll try to finish this up I guess pretty fast uh, you can understand it as just a medical mystery procedural and that's fine do enjoy it don't get then don't get so hung up on the any of the romance aspects of it because it, again this does not have a romance tag in here and it's you're not going to get a lot of that out of there um, but the more you want to think about stuff happening, the more you want to think about interpersonal relations and stuff, I think you'll find that there's like a lot of things happening and there's lots more to enjoy about the series. I just don't think it's, um, I just don't think it's plants within plants within plants until you meet Lacan. And everyone hates Lacan. Moving on. Uh, Megami no Daigo, Kyukoku no Orange. We dropped this, so we did, I didn't watch this. Um, it remembers this because I should just move this to not watching. <laughs> anyway... Uh, Nanatsu no Taizai, Mokushiroku no Yonkishi. Didn't watch this. Ochibi-san, didn't watch that. Uh, Ragna Crimson, didn't watch that. Shangri-La Frontier. This is all stuff I think is leftover still? Right, because Soul Sono no Free Ren, or Free Ren, uh, Beyond Journey's End, or Funeral of the Free Ren, or Free Ren at the Funeral, or there's like a dozen different ways for people to uh, translate this, um, or to give, it, to give it names, let's say. I do like Free Ren Beyond's Journey beyond journey's end because that is more what the whole series is about as opposed to the touching off point of this where you say free run at the funeral is like that is the touching off point as to what inspires the whole uh, travel in the first place um this show uh this show is a deep character study um and it's lovely and it's sad and uh but it's not sad in a way that's going to make you sad sad like it's not going to make you just weep all the time um it's bittersweet uh, it's a little melancholy um it's funny as hell <laughs> it really is um 28 episodes we got i don't know how madhouse worked any of that out but they got 28 episodes put together and good for them um we have not been promised a second season of this uh i think that I think th there's a reason why this manga, I believe, is award-winning as well. I haven't read the manga yet. I am waiting to see if a second season gets announced before I dive in and start reading the manga. Um, the music is so goddamn good. Oh, um, the uh, the fact that they had the fact that they had the bravery to use two different parts of the ending theme for the two different seasons was top-notch. Like so good. Um, it is a, um, if they don't bring it back, I can understand why, because if the point was to drive people to read the manga, then so much to, to bring it back would be triumphant. <laughs> like it, it's, we give so like we, what am I doing there? Let's try this again. They give so much money to Shonen Jump anime because they know that's where these audiences are. And I, and I know people love One Piece and I know, know people love Naruto and somehow people love Bleach. And, and I'm like, there has to be, there had to have been an audience here for this that is way bigger than maybe I expect. And I don't know if that means that um, it should inspire doing more of an adaptation um, or if they got what they wanted out of doing this adaptation. But I think that if there is a group of people out there who is watching this, 
that giving them more of this is so like we want this. Um, the fact that I've been seeing uh, the the fact that I've been seeing so many memes that are essentially free run cross apothecary diaries cross dungeon meshy to just be like, hey, like look at I'm making a meme that has all three of these things kind of interacting and looping in in and out or whatever, and I'm just like, yeah, uh, it, it it's it, like these are the things people like and they want them to interact and they want to do more things and like the, the fan art is out there. Maybe I'm just seeing it more because it's also pattern recognition bias, obviously. Um, the this I think like. You can always say, oh, my favorite thing deserves more. And I'm like, I just think that there's got to be like so many people out there looking at this being like, I like this thing a lot too. I think it could be, it could deserve more. It should deserve more. I want to see more of this. I want to see more of it animated before I start reading the manga too. But I'm happy just reading the manga at this point. I'll have voices in my head to read for everybody. I'll be able to see a lot of like, um, I'll probably be able to like picture more stuff in color and animated as I'm watching it based on now having this really like stuck in my mind. This came out of nowhere for me. It's made a, a wonderful impact, and I have really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I think that if you haven't watched it or if you started watching it and didn't know if you wanted to come back, um, then, uh, you know, let everyone else in the chat and let me convince you that give it some more of a try. You can still drop it if you don't like it. I get it. Not everyone is going to be great with everybody because nothing is great with everybody. But this was really good. It was fun to watch how stuff was turning out. Even when you knew this, like this has got to end up well for everybody because I know there's more manga past this, but it's like, it was fun to see that happen. So, all right, we'll move on. Undead Unluck, I did not watch. So we'll move past that. I don't think I watched any movies this year. I know Dead Dead Demons, Dead 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 Destruction, uh, Zen, Zen Show, like the first one is out. The second one I think is coming out this season. Uh, I talked to Ian about this actually, and he's, because he's, he, He's uh, read this, I believe, and, and he thinks it's great. I haven't read it yet. Um, and he's uh, he's like, at least we're getting movies. <laughs> so that's something. But an animation would be more fun. But I guess we'll get to see it animated in the movies. And so, yeah, uh, maybe at some point I will. It's like a lot of things where I hear a lot of people talk about how good something is. And then I like um, Hoshiri Samidare, uh, the Lucifer and Biscuit Hammer. And I know people are like, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I watched some of the anime because I couldn't get into the manga. So I watched some of the anime and then got to a point where I'm like, ah, I bounced off it again. And I'm like, okay, so it's not, it, this is just me. This is, this was not my jam. Um, so in some things I will just always end up bouncing off of. Uh, Doraemon, didn't watch that. Didn't watch the uh, Given Hiragi mix. Um, because I didn't watch the first Given movie either. And the series was good. Um, Kind of should watch maybe the, other, well, we'll see. Whatever. Uh, Haikyuu, didn't watch that. Didn't watch this Gundam Seed Freedom. Or uh, Madoka Magica got uh, their event film. Um, Omuro K, didn't watch that. Uh, despite the fact reading Yudu Yudi, like I do, but yeah, didn't actually read that. Oshiri Tante Saraba, <laughs> more butt detective. Paripi Kome, uh, didn't watch the Yaboi Kongming thing. Didn't uh, Shimajiro Mirokujima no Nanairo Carnation didn't watch that. Chikumaru no Dokon Jogairu Yanen no Eiyu Kyoshitsu OVA no uh, Elemon no Ensemble Starts Suyoku Selection Checkmate nope. The Great Pretender Razbliuto I uh, didn't watch the first part of it. Hajimite no Futariki Futarikiri that's hard to say Futarikiri didn't watch that though. Ima shorai ni hairi maska. I didn't watch that. Iskai de mofu mofu nare nare. Surutame ni gambatte mas. I don't know why this made it down into movies. It's not. Uh, Heather and I watched Fluffy Paradise, and and yeah, it was okay. Uh, as as Doodles has said as well, right? It was it was it was um, aggressively mid. Uh, we had hoped that it would just be really into the like fluffy, fluffy part of it. It they tried to integrate more story into it that I'm sure is built into the novel. Um, it didn't 
it didn't feel, I mean, it's, I made to the teacher abuse episode. Yeah, that's fair. That was a hard kind of watch to be like, why are we putting up any, why is anybody putting up with this? She's 20 years old. Why doesn't she just turn around? She's 27 years old. Why don't you turn around and be like, fine, I will demonstrate to you how goddamn good I have as whatever. But, um, yeah, there's aspects of this, like, uh, the whole passing judgment on humanity thing was peculiar. Yes, Lysander, I agree because we don't check in with that often enough to really remind ourselves that that's why we're down here. And it's just like, yeah, she just wants to cuddle cute fluffy animals. I would have thought that she would have found more ways to make that work. And kind of how a scent, uh, a sentence of a bookworm is about mine trying to, um, I need to do this thing so I can have a book. I can't. Okay. Well, I need to do this other thing so I can have a book. Well, I can't do that. Okay. If I do this thing, it'll lead to this thing. It'll lead to this thing. It'll lead to this thing, right? Yes. But not for another 15 years. Okay. Well, if I do these 60 things and I oops my way into the nobility, then I can have a goddamn book, right? Yeah, you can. Then that's what I guess I am in the middle of doing. And that's kind of, this feels like it's the same thing of, Hey, if I make a sanctuary to put all of the monsters and animals in the world, then we can just like, and I let adventurers hunt there to kind of cull the herd, but then I can also go there to like cuddle all the animals all the time. Will that work? It's like, yes. Great. Aggressively mid. Uh, the chibi shorts to apothecary diaries have been very fun. Um, it's, I didn't find all of them. I've only seen some of them, but they're fun. They're only like a couple minutes long. Uh, monsters. Nope. Uh, Nozumanu Hushinobo Kensha. Nope. Uh, Odekake Kozame, uh, cross with Chibaken Kuro Aijio. Nope. Uh, Panda Narikiri Taiso. Nope. Seiyu to Yoasubu Animation. Nope. Fuji ni wa Monogatari ga aru. Ah, Fuji City and Kyoani did a PR video. Um, it's a six minute thing. Only accessible on this site. I didn't watch this. You have to geographically be within Uji City. So if you want to watch this Kyoani video, you have to answer questionnaire and also be within Uji City and uh, and be on this website. And then um, someone will probably record it on their phone. You'll be able to watch it online eventually. Anyway, Watashi no Shiwasi na Katachi. So this is um, an aired episode of My Happy Marriage, which was that showing on Netflix? I mean, I'd like to watch this because if it's just an unaired episode, that seems like that might be nice. I'll maybe have to track it down. You go to the Card Game Chronicles? No. Yubisaki Pucci? No. Okay, cool. It is time for an ad break, uh, my lovelies. Uh, sit tight. I'm going to send you to commercial, and we will be right back. I know it's a fast thing I'm doing. We will be right back, and we'll move on with what's happening in spring. Don't go away. And we're back, I think. Yes. You know what? We're back. It's Beaches Anime Roundup. I am talking about what we just finished talking about, uh, 2024 winter. And now it's a preview for 2024 spring. And the idea is to do this in like two hours. I'm going to take a cookie break briefly. Thank you to Lord Hosk and family uh, for sending us a uh, care package of um, a selection of Girl Scout cookies. These are the Toffee Tastics, which I think are the gluten-free ones. Um, weirdly had, like, I'm not gluten intolerant or anything like that, um, but I have, like, kind of a weird... Uh, I like these. I didn't expect that I would like these. And then every time they show up, I am, I'm always like, I don't want to eat these right away because I know that nobody else really likes them. And therefore, if I eat the other ones that everyone else are eating first, these will be the ones that are left at the end. And I'll be able to eat these at the end because they'll be left. It's like putting mustard on crackers. I did forget to mention at the top of the show, um, we are on AnnieChart.net, and for you, it might look different when you're there. You can make it look like what I'm looking at by um, hitting Control Plus on your keyboard or Command Plus on your keyboard, 
uh, to blow up the um, the bigger you the bigger you make the text, um, the responsive design kicks in and eventually looks like something you'd see on your phone, so or you know tablet or whatever. Um, I use this because it's a lot easier to have just one thing up at a time that everybody can see and read along with me. I could probably blow it up even bigger if, um, if people want to be able to just read off of their screens while I am talking. But I figured this was big enough that I can read and you can read and we're all comfortable here. I've been seeing people talk about um, how big uh, anime is as a slice of uh, Japanese culture and even just popular culture, which is a smaller chunk of culture in general. Um, and I see tiny space screen. I love this. I understand it's getting bigger, but it still feels like it's a slice slimmer, similar to if one watched only American prestige television. And I'm like, yeah, like... I watch Late Night with Seth Meyers on YouTube. I'm glad they put it up there because I don't have cable. Um, but I like to be able to watch the late night shows. I love a closer look, all that kind of stuff. I love corrections. God, I love corrections. Heather and I both love corrections. I wish he would keep doing it. He's stopping. That's probably for a good reason. Um, but when he would talk about watching Succession or watching like some other shows and you realize like um, – I'm like, I don't know what that is or where that is, but through cultural osmosis, through watching him make jokes about it, I would therefore learn a little bit about what the show is about. And you hear that then from other people. And, um, but even then it's like, to me, it was like having people talk about Game of Thrones as well, because I watched like the first season at one point and then I just fell off of it. We weren't interested in watching more. So I, I didn't watch any more of it. You hear things here and there. Um, and there's that sense of, well, that means you've missed a cultural touchstone. And I'm like, it absolutely does not. Because um, that's like, I've never read the Harry Potter books. And I've seen three of the movies, uh, mostly on buses and airplanes. So that's not a part of my life. And I don't give a shit about it. But at least I understand, and the same thing with like a lot of these other things. I'm like, I understand they're out there and I understand that people love them. But I'm not like, I did not interact with those things and therefore I can't talk about it in depth uh, in, in any of these other ways. But through cultural osmosis, I've heard people talk about these things and then therefore I, I get to hear about, um, I, I get to hear about those things. So, you know, Star Wars is a thing that I've seen many, many times, of the original trilogy. So, you know, that exists as a cultural touchstone to me. Um, and there is that conversation that we've had about how cable um, roughed that up because network, like broadcast network television was, you only had a few networks and therefore you watched one of four things if you're watching television. But that also then meant that if you were watching television, you weren't listening to radio shows anymore, were you? And so then you start to be a striation between, in terms of age, in terms of um, demographic of your household, like socio socioeconomically, like the demographic of your household, whether you had a radio or you had a TV, uh, whether you spent a lot of time at the TV or whether you didn't. Um, and then those things have changed and grown and, and everything over time. And so, um, and that even got down to like fricking um, Seth at one point on, on late night saying that, uh, talking about the one of the freaking New York Times games and and him like working it into a couple of his monologues and stuff because and he and then he realizes at one point he doesn't realize but he doesn't make mention he's like are we the only ones here that play whatever this game is and it's like right it's like yes dude you are and and uh that's what it's like to game actually because there's so many video games out there that oh you your group of 30 people might be really into playing apex legends but that means nothing to the people who don't play apex legends because they'd have no idea that it exists right so it's it's tough um uh everyone wants to think that their thing is bigger and getting bigger and it's like i don't know i don't know if it is there's the people who are the super fans there's the there's the ring around them that are not but they they indulge and they enjoy it 
There's the ring past that who's like they occasionally take take part in it. And there's the ring around that, which are people who are like aware of it, but don't know anything about it. And then there's the ring around that, which is people who don't know anything about it. And we are in that um, we are in that ninth circle of hell. Uh, we get to talk about anime in North America. I love that it's gotten really big here, uh, bigger than it has ever been. And I love that that has been holding on. Um, but I know like I've li I lived through the times where it's like you can live in a major city and not have access to anything that looks like the stuff that you like. You'd have to go to a, you'd have to go to a, the comic book store that has the one Japanese anime CD that is $70 for some reason. And you have to wonder whether this is the month you're going to try to buy it or not. The Oh My Goddess second soundtrack. Let's talk about 2024 spring Astro Note. Takumi, a gifted chef, chef was just let go from his job. He lands a gig at an old boarding house called Astro Soul, but hesitates to accept after learning he must also live there full time. All right. I guess he's going to cook there. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. That is until he meets the beautiful and charming caretaker, Mira, and he's sold. The two begin to work together and their connection deepens, but Mira has a secret. She isn't from this world. They're letting that just go like right off the bat. So uh, yeah, I'm going to watch it. We'll see whether it's a fun rom-com or not. Bartender. Kamino Glass. Uh, yes. I don't know if it's a remake. If it's coming in at a different point in the manga or what it is. But I like the original Bartender. I'm going to watch this. See how this goes. Uh, I always thought that the original Bartender felt um, it felt very weird because it felt like it got away from what it what it originally felt like, which is like everyone comes in, they sit down, they talk to him and things like that. And it's like, oh, there's more of a story here. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize or even want there to be more of a story here. But I guess that kind of makes sense that you might have that happen there. Looking forward to it. Blue Archive, the animation. Uh, the anime will adapt the Countermeasures Committee arc. Isn't that exciting? I have no idea what this is. Uh, I mean, I do because I read I read all this stuff. Right? You saw the check marks. I've watched. I've gone through this already. The city's academies are divided into their own districts and are considered mostly independent. The general student council act as governing board to manage the academies as a whole. However, the group's ability to govern has come to halt since the mysterious disappearance of the general student council president. Countless issues have begun to surface throughout Kivotos. I don't know what the fuck that is. In the absence of the president's leadership to avoid disaster, the general student council requests assistance from the federal investigation club also known as Shkere. I know, Skale. In fact, Shkai is the city's newest club and the last to be approved before the president's disappearance to accomplish, accomplish its task. Shkare relies on the guidance of a sensei who can help them resolve the incidents around Kivotos. Students are required to carry personal weapons and smartphones. Get a taste of the military action, love, and friendship the Academy City has to offer. Why haven't I put a check mark there? I hope you enjoy it. Maybe it's your jam. It ain't my jam. Boku no Hero Academia 7. I haven't watched the first six one or the dozen movies. I know there's a really hot bunny. We'll move on. Bokyaku Battery TV. Iron Armed Pitcher Haruka Kiyomine and the Shrewd Catcher Kei Karame, AKA the Skilled General were considered to be an unrivaled monstrous battery duo. If you don't know anything about baseball, a battery is uh, the two grown men who play baseball, who've been working together for like years, who like know each other very well, the pitcher and catcher, as it were. Uh, in sports, we're talking about sports in pitcher and catcher, meaning that they, they can read each other's minds and they're exceptionally good at playing with each other. Um, they, they know uh, how to adapt to different situations. The catcher's the general of the field, as it were. So yeah, unrivaled, monstrous, battery duo. Oh my God, these guys sound like they're amazing. Oh Jesus, they've been playing together for years. In the middle school baseball world. Sure, they were both scouted by various powerhouse high schools across the nation. You know, they probably also have 
you know, they were required to carry uh, weapons. But somehow they both ended up at Tokyo Municipal Kodesashi High School. What the fuck? Why would they do that? It's not known for baseball at all. On top of that, other star players who had lost to that duo in the past and completely strayed from baseball coincidentally also enrolled at that school. What a coincidence. And their meeting sets everything into motion once again. Their high school baseball story begins now. Sorry. I don't watch sports anime as a rule. Um, and I'm not going to watch this one either. But goddamn, like, this is so... It's just so over the top. Like, it's just so over the top. So... I hope you enjoy your Prince of Tennis. Uh, moving on, Date Alive 5. I don't didn't watch the other ones. Moving on. Deki Sokonai to Yobareta Moto Eiyu wa Jika kara tsui ho sareta no de tsukikatte ni ikiru koto ni shita. I don't know what that translates to, and I apologize. <laughs> anyway, uh, I can finally go search for the peaceful life I've been looking forward to since my past life. Alan. Oh, maybe that is the title. Okay. Uh, Alan, a boy called a failure. A boy called Alan, because he was not blessed with a gift from God, is actually a former hero who still has the memories and powers of his past life. Negima? Using his banishment from his family's duchy as an excuse, Alan is about to start a carefree journey to do whatever he wants when he comes across an attempt on the life of his ex-fiance, Negima? The former hero wants to live a re relaxing life this time around, but the heroic fantasy life he never wanted is about to begin. So he didn't have the heroic fantasy life previously. I don't really... So it's reincarnation. It cool. Whatever. It's not... I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm in a mood tonight ladies and gentlemen, and I am going to goof. Um, uh, I'm going to goof all night. Oh, and the non-binary pals. I forgot. I need to be better at that. I'm going to get better at that. I'm going to try to get better at that. Uh, for all those who are watching and who are, for all those who are also not watching ever, uh, I'm going to try to be better at that, but also going to goof around like a motherfucker tonight. So um, hang in there. If I make fun of something that you dearly love, well, I... I I apologize. I will, I will goof on stuff, and we all need to have a sense of humor about the stuff we're going to watch, right? This, the, hmm. Okay, girls band cry. The main character drops out of high school in her second year and aims at entering a university while working alone in Tokyo. A girl is betrayed by her... F a girl is betrayed by her friends and doesn't know what to do. Another girl is abandoned by her parents and tries to survive in the city by doing part-time jobs. This world lets us down all the time. Nothing goes as planned. But we want something we can continue to like. We believe there's a place where we belong. That's why we sing. And I watched the trailer. <laughs> it's rather large toad did as well. The trailer doesn't give a lot of this off. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to watch a couple episodes of it because I didn't, didn't feel it uh, from the trailer, but um, yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I might, yeah, might draw. I mean, I want to be clear. The reason why I checked this is because I'm like, well, I watched Bochi the Rock, and that was fun. Is this gonna is this gonna go from being like serious things, but also let's have some fun, uh, or is it gonna be this is gonna be serious things and let's just get worse and worse and worse because it could. So give it a couple. We'll we'll see what happens. Right? It's it's very CG. Like it is, um, it's very CG. <laughs> Watch the trailer for that. That's that's why I remember why this looked off somehow. I'm like, right, it was the it was the very I'm remembering um the uh Kurage one, the jelly. I'm remembering that uh over top of the this thing. But yes, this is the fairy CG one. But so yeah, go have a look. Oh, if you uh, Tiny Space Marine, if you haven't watched Bochi the Rock yet, please do. Um you also might find it hard to take if you're if you have social anxiety because it is Apparently, very real for people who have social anxiety. Uh, it it is like can be a fucking impact. So anyway, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'll watch this. We'll see what happens. I watched a lot of stuff that has that really like really. I watched a lot of stuff that has that really like over the top. 
animation where people are talking and they won't stop fucking moving and it's kind of distracting. You don't know why they keep doing it, but they're obviously trying to make a point by doing that kind of stuff. So I have watched some of those things before and some of them blow me away and some of them I don't really like so much either. But you know what? I might just end up watching this and we'll see what happens. Hananoi kun to koi no yamai. This has got a different title in English. I forget what it is and one of you will tell me. Hotaru Hinase is a first year in high school that has a great family and wonderful friends, but not so much luck when it comes to romance. Still, that's fine. It's just high school. One, day, It's first year in high school. You're in grade 10. One day, she happens to see the hot boy from the class next door, Hananoi, get dumped. Seeing Hananoi standing in the middle of the park all alone, Hotaru decides to hand him an umbrella. That little act causes, Han causes Hananoi to ask her out soon after. What does love even mean? What does it mean to be in love? Hotaru is flustered at suddenly being asked to by Hananoi, who has an endless amount of love for the person he loves and wants to do everything he can for them. Well, well, let's put that to the fucking test. This is a story about first love between a girl who doesn't understand romantic love and a boy that may be a bit too heavy-handed when it comes to love. Yes. I will watch this. A condition called love. Thank you. I don't... Yeah. Anyway. Um, I think this is Hananoi's love is scary, is what <laughs> they're trying to get across, maybe? I don't know, but... Uh, we'll see. Well, we'll see. It's a, it's a romance drama of all things, but yeah. Henjin no salad bowl. Um, it's nice to see she's getting more work in other series. Sosuke Kaburaya, an impoverished detective, meets Sada, a princess from another world with magical powers. Sada begins living with Sosuke, and she quickly adjusted to life in modern Japan. Meanwhile, Livia, a female knight who came from the same world as Sara, found herself lost and homeless, but surprisingly enjoyed her days here. Well, Japan's fun. Uh, these two people who live a positive life despite their situation have begun to have an impact on Sosuke and the other oddballs in the neighborhood, including a devilish lawyer, a divorce agent, and a cult leader. Now, I was going to be like, there ain't no way. I'm not going to do this. And then I saw this, and I'm like, okay, well, that might be fine. That might be okay. And then when I saw this, I was like, oh, okay. I will give this a couple episodes. I have to know how weird this is going to turn into. Um, so yeah, Henjin no uh, Salad Bowl. Uh, the Weird People Salad Bowl. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll watch it, see what happens. There is a series that I saw a thing for um, that has like a girl sh who transfers into a classroom and she, was it called? Shika noko 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 something tan tan and i didn't see it on the list and i don't know if i've missed it but it's a weird girl who has antlers um and it's clearly a gag anime and i do want to watch that and i don't think i saw it in the list so i hope i find out whatever the hell that is because heather's watched the trailer and she was like nope <laughs> and i'm like i don't I, I knew exactly you were gonna say no but this is my shit absolutely so we'll see um Anyway, I am going to watch this too. Well, or at least watch a bit of it and see what happens to it. Uh, sound, Euphonium Sun. Uh, the third season of HBK Euphonium. Kumiko's third year finally begins with the concert band at Kitauji High School over 90 members. Kumiko is now the president because give the Euphonium player something to do uh, and does her best with her final high school club activities to try to win her long-desired gold at nationals. I hope you enjoy your Euphonium anime. Uh, when it was clear to me the girls weren't going to kiss, I didn't care anymore. Moving on. High Speed Etoile. This is some costuming work, let me tell you. The show becomes uh, show follows the character Rin Rin Do. The Rin once had a dream of being a ballet dancer, but had to give up on that dream due to an injury. Afterward, she became a neat and a gamer who lived in her grandmother's house. But one day, she is suddenly thrown into the world of racing. The anime takes place in the near future. The latest technology is made so vehicles can travel at 500 kilometers an hour safely and securely. Oh, so it's a slot car race. Is that what it is? Because I saw that and I'm like, oh, vehicles can travel 500 kilometers. You're not wrong. We li actually live in an age where the latest technology has made vehicles travel at 500 kilometers an hour and also safely and securely. So this is Shinkansen racing is what this is. And God damn it, I would watch a series about Shinkansen racing. I absolutely would. Anyway. A next generation race event called Next Race is born, which changes the world of racing. Next Racing features AI control support and a revel burst mechanism. A newcomer named Rin Rindo will make her debut in Next Race and will further revolutionize the sport. Cool. Have a good time, skin tight outfits. Himitsu no Aipuri. 
main characters, Himari, Aozora, and Mitsuki Hoshikawa enter Paradise Private Academy. Himari, who aspires for Aipri, AI Pri, maybe? No, it's Aipri, but it's capitalized, so it's weird. Dreams of making 10,000 friends, and we get to watch her make all of them. Uh, but for the Shy Nexus Himari, it might be a bit difficult. Himari unexpectedly makes her Aipri debut? She has a secret. She can't even tell her best friend, Mitsuki. It seems that Mitsuki has a secret of her own. The secret bears Himari, and Mitsuki's Aipri begins. Okay. Well, have a good time. Ji-san, Ba-san, Wakagaeru, or uh, Grandpa and Grandma Turn Young Again. Uh, the story of Ji-san, Ba-san, Wakagaeru, Wakagaeru follows Shozo and Ine, an elderly couple who are living a quiet life in a farming village in Aomori Prefecture. After eating a mysterious apple that they discover on their apple farm, Shozo and Ine spontaneously regain their youth, but even after being reinvigorated, they continue to live life at a grandparently pace. It's very cute. It's super goddamn cute. I've been reading it since the beginning. It's so good. And it it has... It, it's not just the same thing over and over and over again, but yeah, it's... um, Yeah, I I would say why it's it's light and fun and they have grandkids even they have kids and they have grandkids and that's i think it's a lot of fun uh oh gekyoru points out that i've never seen an ipri uh but i saw someone blogging about it and in the world of ipri canada exists holy shit really and the two character or and two characters not these two but two characters come from the town of pankuba All right, moving on. Do the grand oh right, do the grandkids get old? Yeah, everybody else is aging at a normal rate, right? They turn young again because they eat a golden apple. It's good. It's it's fun. It's just, it's fun. Uh John Jong Tama Khan, sequel to Jong Tama Pong. Uh I did not watch the first one. I will not be watching this one either. Um Kai to Otome to Kamikakshi. And I was looking at this being like so it just looks like it's going to be mystery. Oh, it's got an etchy tag. Oh, I don't know about this romance. I don't get that either. Oh man. It's going to be creepy and weird. Isn't it? An aspiring novelist teams up with an enigmatic colleague to solve supernatural urban mysteries. Ogama Sumideko is a busty bookstore clerk. Huh? Who wants to become a novelist? Wait a minute. After some writing success in her youth, when strange occurrences start cropping up around the city, she teams up with her flirtatious co-worker, Adashino Ren, to look into them, but Ren is hiding a secret of his own. Hang on a minute. With their combined skills of occult knowledge, what will they discover as they investigate? This <laughs> is just being called Mysterious Disappearances. Um, the, the manga on Manga Dex is called something a little different. It's like Maidens, Mysteries, and Something Disappearances. And I was like, oh... Okay, weird. The thing is, it mentions boobs, it mentions being etchy and all that kind of stuff. I do not remember from the manga it being like, oh yeah, like it's like, she got big boobs. The end. Like, that's kind of it. It's not like, it's not horny. It doesn't feel horny anyway. Uh, I don't remember it being horny. So, yeah, um... I want to see what the adaptation's like. I want to see what this actually turns into. So that's why I've put it on my list because maybe this will be interesting. Uh, anyway. Uh, kaiju Hachigo, I will assume. With the highest kaiju emergence rates in the world, Japan is no longer a stranger to attack by deadly monsters. Hmm. Japan is no stranger to attack by deadly monsters. Sorry. Enter the Japan Defense Force, a military organization tasked with the neutralization of kaiju. Kafka Hibi no you know, a normal name. A kaiju corpse cleanup man has always dreamed of joining the force. It's a very planetesque kind of starting thing here. But when he gets another shot at achieving his childhood dream, he undergoes an unexpected transformation. How can he fight kaiju now that he's become one himself? I ask the dude who's, uh, I don't know, uh, ask the, the Attack on Titan guy, I guess. I don't know if I want to watch it or not. Um, cause the giant monster thing has never been my jam. Uh, I'm going to just kind of hang in there. I have uh, friends who like kaiju stuff and they will probably say something, whether it's good or not. And I, <laughs> I think maybe also when I saw production IG, I was kind of like, Oh yeah, they used to make good stuff. That's just what always occurs to me when I see their name now. <laughs> so 
I think maybe that might have been a thing. Uh, yeah, uh, if you enjoy it, please enjoy it. As I always say, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the premise. I think it's kind of a, a fun idea. I just don't know if I want to watch it. So moving on. All right. Kamiga, I'm sorry. Kamiwa Game 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 Ni Ueteiru. Uh, Kamiwa Game Ni Ueteiru. In their overabundance of free time, the gods grow bored and decide to create challenging battles of wits to spice this is Yu-Gi-Oh! to spice things up. Their opponent, humanity, a select few players called apostles, meet the god on the spiritual realms playing field to beat the deities at their own games. A former god named Lelesha has woken after sleeping for thousands of years. Her first demand is to meet this era's very best player. She's introduced to Faye, an acclaimed rookie apostle. You know, the very best player, someone who's never done it before. Together, they plan to challenge the gods and win the ultimate prize. But no one in human history has managed to clear 10 games because the gods can be capricious, outrageous, and sometimes downright incomprehensible. So it's Calvin Ball. In the face of absurdity, what can the apostles do but enjoy the contest to the fullest? You're right. What else can they do? Not really that interested. Uh, karasu wa aruji wo erabanai. In the world of flying crow humans, karasu, right? Uh, trouble is brewing. Yukia is the lackluster second son of a regional boss in the North House Territory. Because it's usually they kind of make him feel like Yakuza instead of just like Daimyo. Sometimes when they when they do like, when they do like um, crow people or whatever. Anyway. His younger brother has overtaken him in academics. He is no good at sword battle either. Not that this ever bothers him. So it comes as a shock when this boy who claims to have no ambition whatsoever is the one chosen to attend the Imperial Princeton Court. What awaits Yukia and his new master's intrigue, murder, a mysterious drug, and invasion from an unexpected enemy. Can they save the world of Yatagarasu? Three-legged crows of Japanese myth. Not sure if they can or they can't. It it might be interesting. It's, it's like action and supernatural... And, and I'm like, there's no mystery tag, and I kind of want there to be a mystery tag. Um, so, yeah, uh, it didn't really, we'll see. Maybe people will talk more about it as time goes on, and I will have a, I will have more, uh, be like, oh, maybe we should pick this up. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, Kenka Dokugaku. Scrawny high school student Hobin Yu. Is probably the last guy you'd expect to start a new tube channel that revolves around fighting. But after following some advice from a mysterious new tube channel, Hoban is soon knocking out guys stronger than him and raking in more money than he could have ever dreamed of. Can Hoban keep this up or will he eventually meet his match? I don't know. He must have did he watch a YouTube channel that's like Monkey Steals the Peach? Um it's an action comedy, and I was like, this looks like kind of a you know, uh, you know, underground fighting, techno lies, which I haven't watched yet, kind of thing. And then there's uh, someone is in a chicken head, or maybe that is a chicken person. Um, I don't really know what to make of this. And the comedy tag then kind of gives off that, oh, this is going to be goofy. Uh, maybe I'll have to watch a trailer. I'm not, I'm not thinking about it, so I don't really, I think it's going to, yeah. I don't really know. I don't really know what this is going to be. And so I'm kind of like, you know, if you watch it and you enjoy it, um, uh, please do. I'm sure I will hear from you in the channel after uh, when we come back to review. So be like, Beej, you should have watched this. You would have loved this. It was goofy as hell. And like, okay, well, we'll see. But then again, I did watch an episode of I really, 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 really like 100 fucking girls or whatever the hell that show was called. I watched an episode of that because every, a whole bunch of you here said, oh, you'll love it. You'll love it. It's really good. And I watched the first episode and I was like, I don't see how. <laughs> I haven't got, I have it waiting for me. I haven't watched the second episode yet because I kind of don't know if there is more there that I want to watch. So, so yeah, I'm, sometimes I bounce off stuff that you really don't want me to. I get that, but here we are. Um, Kimetsu no Yaiba Hashira Geikohen. I don't, we're just going to, I'm not going to get into the whole thing about Steven Slayer or whatnot because I haven't watched it, but I know I won't be watching it, but here you go. So, uh, Konosuba, Konosubarashi Sekai ni Shukufuku o Sanju. Uh, it is, uh, Sansai, Sanyo, Sango, uh, whatever. Third season of Konosuba. This functional party is back, but they may be short of members soon because Kazuma is over it. 
Disillusioned with adventure, he wants to become a monk, but Aqua, Megamine, and Darkness, called Bull, over the career dispute, gets them put on hold when a princess requests to hear about their tales. Will the taste of fame at the royal castle keep them together, or will this mark their farewell tour? If you love Konosuba, uh, you know you're already watching this. I have not watched it, so please enjoy it. Kumarba. The anime will be an action comedy that sees Kumarba and Tabris facing off against Bagurin, who is wreaking havoc on the online world. Action comedy. It's... I'm sure it's going to be a thing. It's weird, right? Because I'm like, I... Just by the look of it, I'm like, nah. It does make me wonder if maybe there's more to it because there isn't a kid's tag, but whatever. Um, yeah, maybe it'll be good or interesting. Uh, Kurushitsuji Kishiku Gakkohen, continuation of the Kurushitsuji anime adaptation. So, I don't think I watched Kurushitsuji. Uh, Black Butler, right? Yes, I think that's what this is. There you go. Live to Karachi Data Moto Yusha Koho no Matari Isekai Laifu. The Magical Kingdom of it summons hundreds of heroes from other words, er, worlds every year to fight in their war against the Dark One and his army of powerful demons. Banana is one of those heroes summoned from the royal capital, Palma. But someone is not right. Banana is an only an average merchant. He has no magic, no fighting ability, and his stats are abysmal. Worse, the mishap leaves him unable to return home. Rejected as a hero strand in another world. Abandoned to the far reaches of the kingdom by a cruel king who just wants him gone. Bonanza's feet. Looks pretty bleak, but what will happen when the failed hero candidate finds himself with super cheat powers once he hits level two? I don't know, he becomes OP and gets to fuck the fox girl? Probably. Let's move on. Maholka Koko no Retose, third season. The third season of a thing that I didn't watch, but go off. Moving on. Oh, God. There's, I know that under there, there's a picture. Mao Gakui no Futeki Gosha, Shijo Saikyo no Mao no Shiso, Tensei Shite Shison Dachi no Gakkoe Kayo, two part two, two part two, two part two, two part two, second cure, second season, never watched it, I'm on my way. Um, the... Nah, I'll move on. Uh, Mao no Ore ga Dore Elf no Yome ni Shitanda ga Do Mereraba i? Yi? Zagan might be the most feared evil sorcerer, but when it comes to social interactions, he's the most inept. All those days studying the dark arts won't help him when he falls in love at first sight with Nephelia, the beautiful elven slave. We found the word, ladies and gentlemen, and spends his time, and non-binary pals, I did it again, uh, and spends his entire fortune to purchase her. Fucking fantastic. With no clue of how to talk to each other, the awkward arrangement for a bumbling sorcerer and timid elf begins. You know, like, I, <laughs> I know Malfador's like first slavery of the season drink. And I'm like, is it? I, maybe it is. I, maybe we missed one. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, the idea of like the fantasy romance thing. And it's like, oh, these two people who don't really get it and don't really know each other. At least with the ancient mages bride, the fact that it's like uh, Elias, buys Chica at this weird auction where nobody ever says that she's a slave. They just, somehow she's there and they claim her. Uh, and Elias is like, cool. So what I want to do is I bought you because I need a wife. Everyone's tuning out right now. If you're not seeing the Ancient Mages Pride, it's really, really good though. And at, at, at this auction, right? And it's like, um, <laughs> And he's like, hey, I'm not even a human. I don't even know what this means, but I, I want a wife because I want to learn how to be human. And she's like, no, like, that's not even at all how you do any of that. So it's it, the, the kind of that reaction that they go through where it's like the idea of like, I will teach you how to be human. You teach me how to not kill myself with my own power and, yeah, and I and I love that because yeah, Elias not being human and has no idea what being married means. I'm sure buying somebody even in most in most cases he's probably not even entirely clear what why why this might be a bad thing, right? But it's good that he was there because he saved somebody else from uh, just basically using Chise for all of her power or something. So 
Anyway, as far as this goes, this could end up cute for an elven slave. I don't know. It, let's see what happens. You'll see what happens. I won't. I'm not going to bother watching it. Mushoku Tensei 2, Isekai Itara Honki Das Part 2, second core of a thing I wasn't watching anyway. One room, one room, Hi Itari Futsu Tenshitsuki. Shintaro Tokumitsu is a high schooler living all alone, but things take an unexpected turn when a girl named Toa shows up on his balcony. Not only is she incredibly pure and sweet, there's something different about her, something divine. Just who is Shintaro's new roommate and what horrible hijinks lie in store? I don't know. Why don't you ask... Fly Me to the Moon. What's the name of that? Tony... Tony Kura? Tony Kawa. Tony Kaku Kawaii. Why don't you ask them? They also do that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Oi! Tombo! The story begins with Igarashi, who is disqualified as a pro golfer after a certain noodle incident and thus moves to Kagoshima Prefecture's Tokata Islands, Tokata Jima, to, live, uh, to step out of the limelight on these islands known as Japan's last want, last unexplored wilderness. He encounters a naive girl named Tombo. As it turns out, these supposedly unexplored islands have a homemade golf course where Tonbo plays every day. She demonstrates genius level prowess, playing every kind of shot with just one golf club, a three iron. Igarashi is made by Tonbo's talent, even as he harbors doubts. Oh, it's a he. Okay. Uh, uh, harbors doubts about her only using a three iron. That sounds like a terrible idea. Why would you do that when you're so amazing at golf with it? You should stop that immediately. Yet hidden deep in Tonbo's heart lies a painful, sad past. All right. Have that. Uh, I think the homemade golf course thing will be interesting. I don't know what it's... What I really want this to be is, uh, oh, I did a terrible thing while I was golfing, and I now I live on these islands, but there's a homemade golf course, and I learned to love golf again, and then I golf, and I golf, and there's some golfing, and then there's the golf. And then uh, maybe my heart melts three sizes that day, and um, that will be fine. And we'll learn something about ourselves as a person, and maybe you go back to playing golf as a professional, or, or maybe you won't. But God, I hope you don't drag this girl off her island unless that's what she wants to do. But I don't know, man. I just need, like, more uh, uh, barakamon, I guess, you know. Send somebody who's talented away for a while so they can learn how to be a real human, and then just let that be the show. I like that a lot. Maybe this is the same thing. Okami to Kyoshin Yo. Merchant meets the wise wolf. Lawrence is a traveling merchant selling various goods from a horse drawn cart. One day, he arrives at a village and meets a beautiful girl with the ears and tail of an animal for sale. Her name is Hodo, the wise wolf, and she brings bountiful harvests. She wishes to return to her homeland, and Lawrence offers to take her. Now the once lonely merchant and the once lonely wise wolf begin their journey north. Right. Yes, we're getting a Spice and Wolf remake. And the best part is, uh, while the while like TVDB or whatever is calling it Spice Spice and Wolf again, um, that's you can see from the title that at no point do they call it Spice and Wolf. I, I, I'm going to watch this uh, because maybe they'll track different part of a story. They'll do different things with it. I don't know. Um, where are we getting 12? Well, we know there's an episode coming in 13 hours. Um, I'm interested to see what happens. Uh, maybe it'll be fun. Uh, you know, I know it's like we have Spice and Wolf. Yes, but now we have 16 by 9 Spice and Wolf. Anyway, yeah, just want to see how it plays out. You know, sometimes it's fun to watch how a remake happens and see how far you want to take it. Remonster. Uh, after meeting an untimely death, Tomokui Kanata is re reincarnated as a lowly goblin. I'm going to assume that's the lowly goblin, right? You know, like that seven foot monster, lowly goblin. But he's worked up a monstrous appetite. Thanks to his new ability, it allows him to grow stronger the more he feeds. His feeble status quickly changes and he rises to become the goblin leader. Oh, that's why. With a mix of his past memories, new body, and strong stomach, he's thinking about his new fantastical world. This sounds like fun. I don't really care, though. Right? I'm like, ah, but I'm like, uh. So I'm not going to watch it. So, or, 
Woo! No, the word problematic is coming up a lot. So, okay, some people are not interested. It's... I wasn't going to watch it because it didn't really seem like... Mm, but anyway, moving on. Um, Rinkai. The story centers on this... Oh, right. Remonster got talked about a lot in a thread I was in. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep moving on. Rinkai. The story centers on the sport of women's cycling, which debuted in Japan shortly after World War II. However, organized competitions folded after just 15 years and lay dormant for several decades. Then the Cute Girls Doing Cute Things League launched to revive the sport. So I don't know if that's what's going on here or not. If this is, ooh, that was an hour. Okay, one more hour. I don't know if what's going on here is true, that women's cycling was around uh, and then people stopped, then then women stopped cycling after 15 years and then no one's done it. And so now this is a, there's been a resurgence of, of women's competitive cycling in Japan. Uh, I don't know what kind of competition it is, like short track or like, are we in a velodrome? Is this like long distance cycling? Like, what is this? Is this a, we're prepping for Paris 2024? Is it like trying to get people excited? Is this a, um, uh, that is actually happening in real life is what I mean. All this is happening in real life. And so they're making a story to go with it. Or is this a, Hey, did you know that we don't have women cycling in Japan and we need to get people excited for that. And so we can tie that into what if this existed as a thing, you know? So who knows? Um, I don't know. Again, though, sports, Oh, outdoor speed track. Cool. I will. <laughs> Are these cyclist idols for some reason? <laughs> You know, like in hockey. <laughs> Let's move on. Sasayaku yo no ko ni... Oh, sorry. Sa Whispering you a love song. After performing a song at her school's opening ceremony, musician Yori Asanagi receives an apparent love confession from freshman Himari Kino. But just as Yori decides she wants to return Himari's feelings, Himari reveals that she did not love her but admires her. But you can't unring a bell once struck, and Yori is determined to make Himari fall for her, not just her music. Will their hearts ever beat as one? Will their love fall out of tune? Spoilers! House date in the latest episode of the manga, which is great because the last, I'm going to say, six volumes have concentrated on nothing but a whole bunch of other bullshit that no one should care about involving people who aren't in this picture. But don't worry, those people are now dating because somehow I was supposed to give a shit about them in the first place. I don't. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a pound of salt. I have kilograms of salt about this fucking series. I don't know what happened that they thought that, oh, these two girls are on good track. You know what I should do? I should make up some bullshit and then I should insert a competition between bands. One of the bands is named Lorelei, which is the most generic name that you can give to any musical group in an anime or manga because every one of them has at least one girls group called Lorelei in it. And the other one is called the... The very, you know, the very okay name to have for a group of people, SS. I was very happy to see that be one of the names of the bands. This, this, I'm going to watch this and it's going to be fine because it is. <laughs> But I got so mad at the manga because I'm like, I don't give a shit about any of these people that showed up. All these girls that have to fall in love with each other that you that you crammed into this show all of a sudden. I'm like, and they got so mad at each other for the worst reasons. Oh, my God. I If I remember correctly, the one girl is mad at the other girl because she was kind of in love with her. But then the other girl kind of acted like she wasn't in love with the first girl and this is not these two. These two are fine. We like these two. The other girl acted like she wasn't in love with the other girl. And then that made the other girl mad about that. And that touched off a whole thing where they didn't get along with each other. But thank Christ that Himari, that Kino here, the redhead, that she got um, stolen away to be the manager of the one girl's group that is the one who is angry at the other girl who doesn't understand why the other girl's angry at her. And then, and then Yori has to join as a guitarist 
for the for the other girl's band who's the one who doesn't know why the angry girl is mad at her and then that's how we're gonna have them be at odds but the two girls aren't at odds kino just wants everyone to figure their shit out and get along and i'm like oh oh they that <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading chat here now. Dougma says, the mangaka said that the publisher got involved with the storyline to get more material. The publisher fucked up. The publisher fucked up. Good job, publisher. We had a great story going on between two girls that kind of like each other, and you fucked it up. And the mangaka went along with it because you were, you were, you were probably like, like they, God damn it. God damn it. I'm so mad about this. No, I'm going to watch this because we're not going to hit that point. The arc is just going to be nice. and These two girls are going to love each other. And it's going to be great. And I'm going to watch it and realize that it wasn't probably that good to begin with. <laughs> Say you radio. No, Uda Omote. I'll watch anything that has like, uh, say you doing, uh, the fun kind of say you shit that they do. Um, and, and hosting a radio show together seems like fun. The idol thing, not really sure about how that's going to go. Also, these two apparently had each other's throats. Let's find out. Yuhi Yugure and Yasumi Utatane, high school classmates and co-hosts of a weekly radio program, paint a picture-perfect friendship for their listeners, yet in reality, they couldn't be more different. Well, their off-air dynamic is a whirlwind of chaos and insults. It actually seems a little more like the like the the non-gyaru one. There's this one who they literally put on, this, on the screen, they put gyaru on when they introduce her. The non gyaru one seems to be the one that's a little more like insulting, but I don't know if that's the case. Maybe they're both saying things to each other that they both don't like. As their tumultuous relationship unfolds, they navigate the turbulent waters of friendship and rivalry in the cutthroat realm of showbiz. I'll give it a couple. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, skip lives. The mangaka probably thought that getting paid was a good idea. <laughs> I agree. Sentai Daishiki. Oh, I messed that up. Sentai Daishiki. Daishikaku. Daishikaku. I've never seen that word before. When the monster army invaded Earth 13 years ago, the divine dragon rangers rose up to stop them. With their war raging on, these great heroes are mankind's last hope. Or are they? In truth, the invaders were subjugated within a year, forced to continue to crank out a monster a week for the rangers to crush in front of their adoring fans. But one monster has had enough. Something has to change. He'll rebel against the might of the Dragon Rangers and destroy them all from the inside. I I love Sentai um, subversion. Like I love like uh, like Sentai shows. I think are very fun. Uh, any sort of hero show, I think, very fun. But I don't watch. Uh, I don't watch like Tokusatsu stuff. Generally, if I see something that it's it's like I might like it. It's like oh that looks interesting, but I never really chase it down. Um, so when there's anime that's doing like um, a subversion of like um, of tokusatsu tropes in any way, I like to watch it. Like Astro Fighter Sunred, I love that show. It's so good. Um, love Beyond World Domination, I think it's what Love After World Domination. I love that too. Monster Development Department. Thank you, Rourke. I forgot all about that. I love that show. That was a lot of fun too. I love anything that kind of like um, that that works up all this stuff because it's fun to see how how can you take uh, something that is really known for its tropes um, and then uh, twist it and, and subvert it to make it feel like something else. I think this is interesting because it puts the, obviously puts the monster army on like, well, you were subjugated. So you were doing a bad thing because you were invading um, and the rangers, you know, stood up. But then the rangers said, no, here's how we're going to make this work is that now that you basically subjugated to us, we're the ones in charge, and now actually we're kind of the bad guys here. But maybe both sides are the bad guys? And I'm like, I don't, I don't really know. But um, it's, I think this would be fun, but I don't know about what's happening with it. Like, I'm, I'm like, I don't know how it's going to kind of come off. And, and then when you don't see the word comedy, I'm like, oh, well, that's going to leave me a bit cold, I think. So action fantasy only, and I'm like, you guys will probably let me know. Some of you will probably end up watching it. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what you guys say in the future when I'm saying I didn't watch this. You'd be like, why not? But anyway. Um, Shadowverse Flame Arc Hen. Sequel to Shadowverse Flame Seven Shadows Hen. Arc Ruler has declared he will remake the world, causes all the world's digital friends to run amok as Shade. 
mission given to light and this friends neutralize three towers destruction obtain nexus system use shade light friends tower feet shade battle world begins by shinigami bochan tokuro made third season want to hear something funny so i like the manga for this watch the first season of this i saw a third season when i was going through this i'm like hell yeah i like this i'd like to see how they animate this <laughs> and i went wait third season was there a second season did I, did I watch the second season? And then I go look and I'm like, where did I watch the second season? Cause I don't remember it at all. And so I've kind of gone back and been like, huh, I don't have that in a, I should go, mm, I should maybe just go watch the, I'm getting a, the people in the chat are telling me that yes, you did. And I'm like, okay, I don't, uh, I don't know. So anyway, I am going to watch the third season of this. Cause I did watch the first two and it's cute and it's fun. Uh, okay. Shinkalion changed the world. So <laughs> that's not the one. That's probably not the same one that Hatsune Miku pilots, but she does pilot one of the uh, Hayabusa, one of the E5s, I think, that has that same color scheme in Shinkalion. Yeah. Um, so this was probably meant to be a kid's show all along, but I don't know if Change the World is like growing up with its with its people or not. Uh, so anyway, Unknown is a mysterious enemy that suddenly appeared a long time ago. As a countermeasure, the Evolutionary Railway Development Agency, URDA, has developed the Shinkalion robot that transform into bullet trains to prefer the threat. Pre to prepare for the threat. I want to be a cool person who can protect something. Taisei Oonari, a second-year junior high school student, transfers to Shinkai Gakuen Middle School in search of the clues about his older sister who disappeared two years ago. Spoilers, probably Hatsune Miku. Just then, the unknown appears for the first time in 10 years. Taisei happens to have a high aptitude value as a Shinkalion pilot and is forced to make a decision to fight it. Was the true nature of the unknown was what its purpose? Was the truth that comes to light at the end of the fight? Sorry, the boy's determination and growth begins now. Note, relations are provisional. I don't know what the fuck that means. And we'll be updated when more info is announced. Also, also... <laughs> okay. No, I don't want to say it. I really... I don't want to say it. Oh, I don't want to say it so bad because I don't want to give away... One of the best giveaways about Shinkalion, like the previous series or the recent um, stuff. Okay, uh, okay, somebody in chat did say it. Ohara Renji pointed out there is an Ava crossover for this. So just go look up Evangelion Shinkalion crossover uh, and just watch the clip to see what has happened. And then look up Shinkalion Hatsune Miku crossover and then see what happens there and then realize those were in the show. They weren't advertisements. They weren't a video game special. Those are part of the show. So we're going to move on. I won't be watching this, but I love that it exists and the mecha looks pretty damn good, I think. Um, Shumatsu Train Doko ni Iku I love the fact that they put train in here not like denture or something the anime story is set in a town in a not so ordinary countryside where a big and strange occurrence is happening to its residents but a young girl named Shizuru Chikura has a strong desire to see her lost friend again Shizuru and three other girls board an abandoned train and they set out to the outside world where survival is not certain what awaits them at the last stop of the doomsday train Shumatsu Train Doku ni Iku, where is it going? I'm going to watch this, or where does the Doomsday Train go? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so <laughs> I like the reference back to Shinkalion saying that, oh, well, they were advertisements. Saying, okay, yeah, you're probably, you're not wrong. <laughs> but, you know, anyway. Um, this is uh, the, the, I watched a trailer for this, a teaser for this. It's, interesting um i'm gonna watch it just because i mean i'm gonna watch i'm gonna give three episodes and see where it goes with it because my expectation is like there's no there's no tags and i think maybe because nobody really knows what it is my expectation is it's just gonna be uh actually uh laffy's laffy points it out survival uncertain implies adventure so it'd probably be a mystery a mysterious like a mystery or supernatural tag probably it'll probably be like an adventure thing um 
it's cute girls doing cute things, but it's not doing cute things. It's doing mysterious things. And I don't really know what it's going to mean. So I'm going to watch a few. We'll see what happens. Adaima Okaeri. Strap in. Mas Masaki Fujiyoshi is a stay-at-home spouse and parent. Don't spoil it, chat. They'll get it in a second. He has fought long and hard with feelings of being a burden to his loving husband, Hiromu, due to his status as an omega and the difficulty they faced to achieve this dom domesticity. When their son, Hikari, was born, the family moved to an area better suited for raising children. Despite their newfound domestic bliss, the family's ties to their past are in tatters. There are people they left behind to pursue the creation of their happy family, and when they begin to return, Masaki and Hiromu aren't quite sure they have good intentions. Now, if that was on purpose, then... Surely we know what this is. If that was accidental, then that's a really weird thing to write up in your thing, in, in your synopsis. Uh, but yeah, there, there you go. So if you like the Omegaverse um, or if you just like ABO stuff in general, maybe that's what this is. I don't know. Here you go. There's a uh, two men having a child and we are making them live in the Omegaverse for that. So, uh, Tensei Kizoku, Kante skill de Nariagaru. Our protagonist, Ars Luvent, was reincarnated in another world. Now, hey, hey, wait, Beach. That sounds like the kind of stuff you like to shit on all the time. What's this? Fold up your judgment, put it in your fucking pocket, and I'll tell you. As the young son of a minor noble who owns a small domain, ours was not particularly strong or intelligent, but he was born with the appraisal skill. Motherfucker, that's right. That is able to see others' abilities and statuses. Oh, oh, I hate this so much. He uses his skill to find the best hidden talents in the world to make their small, weak domain into the best. An isekai tale about unification is about to start featuring the kind-hearted R's and the unique talents he manages to find. This is SimCity. I want it to be SimCity. I am trying not to concentrate on the fact that it's... that it is what it is. Reincarnation isekai, young son, minor noble, appraisal skill. Oh no, but... I just want this to be management isekai. I just want it to be about a kid who's like, wait, I can find... I want it to be like the freaking... Tell me what this is. Uh, the Machiavellian villain prince isekai thing. Uh, you know, that. I want it to be like that, but maybe a little faster, maybe a little more concentration on... I mean, there's a witch, and I'm like, oh, yeah, right. there's going to be magic because also the appraisal skill thing. Um... I want a little of that in here. The appraisal skill thing's going to mess it up a little bit because really, I think what I wanted, I want more of anyway, is the, uh, the how the prince rebuilt the nation, uh, if that's the right one, because there was like two that came out because this genius prince did something, something, something. Um, it's the the realist prince. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Yes, it's the realist prince. Um, and yeah, it's like, I kind of just want more of that and I'll take a different telling of that and we'll see if I get sick of the idea of, of, oh my God, you have an appraisal skill, which means you can just do this shit and be like, oh, I see. You are the best in the world at making cupcakes. Uh, help me turn my domain into the best. And like, Roger, we will become cupcake nation. So we'll see what happens. Give it a shot. Tensei Shita, you're going to do, and the thing is like, again, you're, you're all going to roast me for like all my other choices I make at, uh, from now on and also before this based on that. So anyway, um, right. Tensei shitara dai nana oji datta no de kima mani majutsu o kiwamimasu. The qualities valued most in the study of magic are bloodline, aptitude, and effort. You know, friendship, rivalry, victory? Sure. Uh, there was one sorcerer who, despite his deep love of magic, was born a commoner and thus lacked the bloodline and aptitude for it. As he died an unnatural death, he wished he had studied magic more while he had the chance. Then he was reincarnated as Lloyd, the seventh prince of the kingdom of Saloum, and one best blessed with a strong magical bloodline. Reborn with all his memories intact, along with the perfect bloodline and immense talent, 
He was determined to enjoy his new life using his extraordinary magical abilities to master the study of magic that was beyond his reach in his previous life. You know what's funny is that recently I've had people say, uh, I keep hearing it more and more. It's like talent is just hard work uh, and application. Um, because like they say, it's like if you really, if you have the talent should be thought of almost more as drive. Um, that's like if you are willing to put in the time and the effort needed to practice your skill over and over and over again, then people will say that you are talented because you're practicing it constantly. Um, um, yeah, talent is when you get reincarnated, right? Uh, that's, that's that kind of like, it's hard to say that because some people have that whole like the natural aptitude thing where it's like you you hand a three year old child a violin and they start doing they start playing and you're like oh they they are they're just scratching out notes but the next thing you know it's like they're scratching out notes that actually belong to each other and like oh they I guess they have an ear for music it's like sure but they're not great at the violin it's not like they stepped out of the womb knowing how to play violin but it's like you know they they seem to like it and then they put their they put the effort into that and then people say look at their amazing talent and it's like. The talent is the application of the skill, and but also some of those other things. I'm like, okay, cool. So the more I see those things of like, well, you have to be born with a talent, the more I'm starting to feel like, oh, I don't want that to be true because it means that then people might just give up on trying to do a thing in the first place. That's the frustrating part I'm having. Anyway, not so interested in this. I mean, it, it, cute in a way. Uh, I was reincarnated as the seventh prince, I think is what it's being called. But anyway. Not that interested in the thing. Uh, maybe it is your jam. Please enjoy it, I guess. Oh, the manga was fan servicey. I'm seeing in the chat. Um, anyway, I'm, I will move on. Uh, Tensei Shitara Slime Dataken third season. So there you go. More of this. Um, hey, here's a whole bunch of spoilers. It's Walpurgis Night. Um, there's a Demon Lord. There's Holy Knights. There's a Tempest. And then the monsters need to prosper together. There you go. So Slime. Uh, reincarnation thing. Please enjoy. Zafeburu. This apparently has a live action movie. I found it while I was like looking up things about this. I saw the live action movie being listed. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I could just watch that. I don't know. Um, when you're the fame, infamous prodigy hitman known only as Fable. Many things come easy. Being a normal person, however, isn't one of them. In fact, being told he can't kill anyone for a while may just be the hardest job Fable's ever taken. I will watch... This, we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know what will happen. We'll see what happens. There's a bird in it. I should tell Ian, maybe he'll watch it then. He doesn't just watch stuff for birds, but he might. Uh, the Idol Master, shiny colors. Uh, the producer of the 283 production group brings together a whole new cast of idols. <laughs> That's on me. I almost read idiots. <laughs> And I don't mean that, <laughs> but it popped into my head as I was reading it first. And I'm like, oh no, that's not fair. <laughs> but it is funny that I, it is funny that it almost came out of my mouth. Anyway, a whole new cast of idols to the stage. Note the series of the three-part theatrical pre-screening in Japan. Why am I reading this part? It doesn't matter. There's things, the video game, Idol Master, and you guys love shiny colors, so get on it. Uh, the New Gate, an online game transformed into a life or death struggle for its players. Thanks to the valiant efforts of Shin, the most powerful of them, an end to the game and the freedom for everyone seemed within reach. But just moments after Shin defeats the game's final boss, he finds himself bathed in an unknown night light and transports some 500 years into the future of the in-game world, thrown from a simple game gone wrong into a strange new land. One young swordsman of rival strength is about to embark on a legendary journey. So I guess it's a death game that becomes, um, that finishes being a death game and becomes an isekai. So it was a death game, but then it was an isekai, but then it's more stuff to happen. Anyway, and I didn't, didn't hook me. However, <laughs> kitties on their back legs. Yes, please. Tonari no Yokai-san. I think I actually was reading this. This was getting some uh, translation. Um, I'm not sure. In the rural town of Ingamori, the mountain breeze often blows. Everyday life there is mysterious, filled with monsters, humans, and gods coexisting side by side. They live each day with their own joys and worries in their hearts. Buccio lived as a cat until he was 20 years old and reborn as a Nekomata. Mutsumi is a human being who lives a positive life even though she's concerned about her missing father. That is weird. 
Jiro is a crow Tengu who has prote been protecting this town for generations. A slightly mysterious and gentle story of connections that occur in the daily life of a relaxing and heartwarming country town. Yes, 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 yes. I can't wait. I will watch all of it. Uh, well, actually, I'll give it a test and we'll see how it goes first. But I am, I'm feeling good about it. Feeling good about it. See what happens. And look, they even got the light dragon. She makes a cameo. All right, rolling on. Tolken Ranbu Kai Kyoden Moyuru Honnoji. One day, a new sword manifested at their citadel. Kudo Yukimitsu, a sword worn by a commander of the Sengoku era, era, era Oda Nobunaga, was, who was granted to one of his attending servants, Mori Ranmaru. Kudo Yukimitsu makes it known that he is proud to be Oda Nobunaga's beloved sword that clashes with the other swords who also call Nobunaga their former master, Soza Samonji, Heshikiri Hasebe, and Yagen Toshiro. The appointed team captain... Translation thing, I assume. Yaman, Yaman Bagiri Kunihiro must rally a citadel that has fallen into disarray at Fudo Yukimitsu's arrival so they can make it to nationals. In the midst of all this, the Saniwa has received an order to depart for the year 1582. What? The Honnoji event where Oda Nobunaga has met his demise. Anime production will be scripted and overseen by somebody, I hope. Oh, Kenichi Sumitsu, the director and playwright of the original play. Huh. Okay, so is this a play that that they have? So there are boys playing like Oda Nobunaga and like all the other like people. And when they say sword, do they mean an actual sword, or do they mean like like there there is there is a hot young man who is the sword who is worn on the waist of Oda, a big big man worn on the waist of Oda Nobunaga, and when he draws him out. And he, they, and he sends them off to fight the other hot men, and they the other hot men clash because they are swords, and they kiss each other. Is that what's happening here? Anyway. Uh, unnamed memory. My wish as champion is for you to descend the tower. Hmm, you know what? I see these with uh, quotes around them, so it's a quote, and I got to get it right. Uh, my dream as champion is for you to descend the tower and be my wife. Climbing a deadly tower, Oscar seeks the power. I should have done it as uh, Oscar the Grouch if I could only do that. Seeks the power of its master, the Witch of the Azure Moon. He hopes her incredible magic can break a curse that will kill any woman he takes for a wife. I read that and I had to like flip in my mind that it's like um, that he has a curse that kills any woman he takes for a wife. Because it weirdly, my brain like stumbled on it so hard that was like her incredible magic kills any woman he takes for a wife is what I understand. But anyway, it's not. It's he has a curse that does that. When the prince sees how beautiful Tinasha is, we have a name now, though, he has a better idea since she's surely strong enough to survive his curse. She should just marry him instead. Tinasha isn't keen on the idea, but agrees to live with Oscar in, a, in the royal castle for a year while researching the spell placed on the prince. The witch's pretty face hides several lifetimes of dark secrets, however. Secrets that begin resurfacing. Um, nothing about this is objectionable to, be, <laughs> to me as something that I might want to watch. But somehow, I mean, yeah, the I'm seeing like view off says plot twist. She's the one who cursed him, total guess. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that either. I kind of guess that might be the thing that happens. Um, I I don't know what to make of it. And I'm just kind of like, uh, it's not exciting enough to me maybe as a thing to drag me in. This is one of these hemming and hawing moments, right? It's like, you might enjoy it. I, it didn't grab me immediately. What did grab me is that her name is Tinasha. And I was like, I kind of want to just watch the show now that there's, I don't know why that name was like, oh, but you might like the show because of this. So like, I guess like why? Mm -hmm. Anyway, which means that when they say it, they'll have to say Tinasha. And because if they don't, they'll say Chinasha. But move on. Vampire Dormitory. Mm, I want to become your thrall. The cross, a, a cross, not the cross dressing girl, a cross dressing girl and doting vampires. Dangerous cohabitation is about to begin. It's about to explode. After losing her parents and being abandoned by her relatives, uh, Toru uh, Honda is left all alone in this world when she's kicked out of the restaurant where she works with no money and no place to live. 
She's taken in by Ruka, a vampire, in exchange for giving Ruka her blood as his food. Food, you know, greengrocer quotes. She ends up living with him in a boy's dorm full of beautiful boys with unique personalities. Whatever that could mean. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a, um, werewolves. Maybe the boys kiss. I don't know. I am yeah, bounced off that too. <gasps> Windbreaker. The uh, slogan being, Breakers the wind. Where the average scores are the lowest, but the fights are the strongest. Footing High School is renowned as a super school of delinquents. They train only the strongest delinquents who break the wind the strongest. Haruka Sakura, a first-year student, came from outside the city to fight to the top. However, Fudin High School has become a group that protects the town. The town called uh, the Chime of the Windbreaker, Bofudin. The heroic legend of, the, of a high school delinquent, Sakura, begins here. I like delinquent comedy. I don't know. I just, I guess I, I just, I want like seven more seasons of Cromartie High School. This is not going to be my thing. So anyway, I well okay, MTV CDM. This is just a Cuneo game. And I'm like, yeah, actually, why can't I just have a Cuneo anime? That's all I really want. Just give me a Cuneo Kun as an anime. That would be just a lot of fun. I Anyway, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, Yoru no Kurage wa Oyogenai. I watched the trailer for this, and it looks just as absolutely lens flary as this does. Uh, I want to find what I enjoy. Should we just run these all back together? Here we go. Hmm. My wish as champion is for you to descend the tower and be my wife. I want to become your thrall. I want to find what I enjoy. <laughs> Great. Shibuya is a city full of identity. It is here, almost read that as idiots too. It is here on Shibuya's late night streets that illustrator Mahiru Kozuki, former idol Kano Yamauchi, VTuber Kiyui Watase, and composer Mei Kimanuk Takanashi. Four young women who are slightly outside the world join together and form an anonymous group, artist group called Jelly. I also want to shine like someone else. If it's not me, but we, then we might be able to shine. Yeah, it looked it looked interesting from the trailer, but also, um, I don't know. Like it looked it looked interesting from the trailer. Visually, it didn't stand out. That's why I didn't mark it. I'm like it didn't stand out story wise. Because all I could think of was like, man, I'd love some more Shirobako. Because it just reminded me of, oh, these five girls who did a thing in high school. And they wanted to like, we'll take the industry by storm. And and then they haven't yet, but they've kind of been working towards it. And, and in their own little ways, like, and I shouldn't say little ways, by taking jobs in the industry and trying to work towards that area. I'm like, I just want more Shirobako. And I'm like, okay, well, okay. This ends maybe with a thing of being like, we've made a giant impact on Shibuya and people know who we are now and we have did good. And I'm like, that should be a reason for you to watch it if you want maybe that kind of good feeling. It is a drama, so it's lots of hard work and probably some tears. That's why Girls Band Cry, That's this reminded me of that, why I put that in my mind because I guess I expected for it to be that kind of, anyway. It's fine, we, we move on. Yozakura, oh, the Yozakura. Uh, Yozakura, si, uh, Yozakura Sanchi no Daisaksen. I know all of those words, it feels like, but why don't I? Um, Taiyo Asano is a super shy high school student, and the only person he can talk to is a childhood friend, Mutsumi Yozakura. Yozakura, whatever. Uh, yeah. Turns out that Mutsumi is the daughter of, an, of the ultimate spy family. Even worse, no, no, you're not. We all know who the ultimate spy family is. Even worse, Mutsumi is being harassed by her overprotective nightmare of her brother, Kyoichiro. What drastic steps will Taiyo have to take to save Mutsumi? A spy family comedy, the mission begins. Who ever thought they could make a spy family comedy? The mission begins. It's funny because any of these people could be the super shy high school student, but I, I wouldn't have picked this one to be the super shy high school student. I would pick that would be the brother who is overprotective. Not that one specifically, um, because I wouldn't have put that face on the super shy high school student. But anyway, um, it didn't really grab me. However, <laughs> it's Yudu Camp Delta. 
uh, getting season three. Super excited about this. Can't wait to watch more of this. Um, going to put on my biggest, coziest outfit and watch it between April and June. <laughs> it's going to get very warm in my house. I'm not going to do any of that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm going to read things out loud, but it's very, that made me laugh. Okay, moving forward. Hotels.com. All right, we got 25 minutes till I'm supposed to end this stream. Roughly. TV shorts, Ageo Tokim, a planet inhabited by creatures that never see the light of day. There's nothing to be proud of, but that's okay. <laughs> Great synopsis. Still don't want to watch it. Great synopsis. Sequel to, oh, I thought the sequel to the first thing. Sequel to Chibi Godzilla no Gyakushu. Gyakushu. Um, the anime kaiju is about to raid again. Uh, Niji on animation two, second season of a thing that, uh, oh, I see cute love lives. I mean, they are, they're like little beans. Uh, I am a sucker for this, uh, style, but I don't know anything about Niji Saki high school. So please enjoy that. Uh, obviously dungeon meshi getting more. We're happy about that. It's Kiga Michibiku Isukai Dochu. I said, I wasn't watching it. Still not watching it. Udase say Atsuda, of course, getting more of that. I will again, probably have lots to watch this coming season. If I haven't already watched Udase Atsuda, well, then there's more coming. So that's kind of fun. Ian probably knows more Japanese than I do, Snout. Uh, let's see. Blue Lock episode Nagi. Uh, I don't know anything about Blue Lock. These are in the movie. So this will be faster than I expect. Bochi the Rock Re. I got all excited. Then I saw that. Ah, but first of the compilation movie duology. Oh, Okay, well, then there's a second one coming. So it's probably not, it's going to be new, you know? So yeah, Death and Rebirth. Anyway, looking forward to the second of these. I don't really feel like I need to watch the first one unless they insert like like three extra minutes of animation of Bochi flying a YF-21 or something. But anyway, uh, Code Geass, uh, Daka no Rose. Didn't watch Code Geass at all. New project presentation. So new anime series, four episodes, despite the fact it's a movie. But hey, there you go. Enjoy the new thing for those who like that. There's Dead Dead Demons, Dead 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 Destruction, Kosho, second film. Maybe I'll go over to Ian's house and we'll just watch both back to back. We'll see what happens. Uh, Gintama no Th On Theater, 2D, Ikkoku Keiseihen. I am still trying to figure out what order all of my Gintama episodes that I have downloaded off the internet are supposed to go in. And the reason I say that out loud like that is because I don't give a shit whether or not Crunchyroll has it all or not. What I want is I want the episodes that have the user's notes. I want the translator notes for this. It is so important because there's so much Japanese culture that they just offhand reference that if I don't know what they're talking about, it doesn't make sense as to why they're doing it. And then I feel like I'm trying to laugh at something I don't really understand. Gintama has been great as, as a means, this is just, it was the earlier episodes that Rumble did and like other, other groups did were just really good at giving me cultural notes. And I've always, that's a thing that I miss about modern anime is that whether you, you put them tastefully at like the top of the show or better yet, put them at the beginning of the episode or put them at the end of the episode and end cards and stuff. I love all of that as a cultural export, being able to tell people the things that are in the culture are really valuable, I think. Just being exposed to it doesn't help you understand the import of it in a lot of ways. Like, oh, that's a reference to Dragon Quest. No, that's a reference to a very specific thing about Dragon Quest that happened during this particular time that is very important for you to know why that's so funny. Anyway. I will not be watching this then because it is a theatrical cut of something I'm hoping to watch, but we'll, we'll see how that, I might've even watched this already actually, but well, we'll see. So I don't recognize this guy offhand. Maybe I should, I don't know. Uh, I brought yes, the movie full energy. Is that how that's pronounced? I don't really get it. Uh, Iris has reached the 10th anniversary of the debuts enjoying smooth sailing, but there was a thought that came to the minds of the girls, what will happen to us in the next 10 years? I'm always asking myself that. On the day of a live concert, the mysterious talking white squirrel appears from a t-shirt of goods delivered to Iris's dressing room. Suddenly they're enveloped in dazzling light and what spreads out before their eyes is a mysterious world with many big rainbows 
floating on it. This is Risu Risu Land, a world where you can be anything you want to be. The five of them are enjoying themselves in this fun and wonderful place, fulfilling their dreams, and realize there is something missing in this world. There is no song in this world. Shio Risu asks I Riss to help uh, bring back the song. Why did the song disappear? Can they bring song back to this world once again? At the end of this journey, will the girls find what they really want to be? Who knows? Uh, Kuda Meru Kagari. So, Kuda Yukaba. Very similar styles, animated by the same team. I don't know if these belong together. Maybe they do. In the coal mining town, crowded with small-scale miners, known as the Hakoniwa, there is a girl named Kagari who runs a map shop and a sheltered friend, Yuya, who dreams of breaking free from the Hakoniwa and the ever-changing labyrinth-like toe. Lately, suspicious sinkhole accidents occurring. This is like Innsburg. Occurring frequently in the town begin to encroach on their daily lives. Will Kagari be able to overcome the situation and determine the fate of their town? Beyond the challenges, the girl will grow up a bit today. Okay. And then business is slow for the Otsuji Detective Agency. So Tato and his juvenile sidekick Saki will take any job that comes along, even one that sounds like a lot more risk than it's worth. It's festival season in the city, but away from a public eye, a wave of mysterious disappearances has occurred. A newspaper man hires Sotato to investigate, suggesting that any answers that answers might lie somewhere in the dark notorious anarchic maze that is the city's physical, social, and moral underground. Sotato subcontracts the gig to Saki, but soon enough regrets it when the kid also goes missing. Now Sotato is obligated to venture into the dark himself and confront its dubious subterranean denizens, including the malicious Laughing Masks gang and the renegade police squad piloting the fearsome Demon 463 armored train. Yo... shiro -san? Shiromi, yo, yoro san, yoro mi. Don't know what that's supposed to be. That clearly the four six three probably is some sort of pun. Anyway, these two things have to do with each other. I might watch them if I see them come up on a on a source that I could get, but I don't really know. So we'll move on. Good Christ! Thank goodness for Meitante Konan Hyakuman Dol no Michi Shirube. We will never be through with the Detective Conan uh, in our lifetimes. 27th Detective Conan movie. I'm not reading this. I don't. I I know people love Conan. You're going to watch this. Please enjoy Japanese sword kid blossoms. I don't know anything about it. Ah, second film of the spinoff series of Yudu Yudi series, Omidoke, Dear Friends. So featuring Sakurako and her sisters, there we go. Moving on. Rabbit's Kingdom, the movie. Okay. Uh, commemorate the 10th anniversary of Tsukiyuta. Uh, Tsukiyuta. Probably not going to watch this, I don't think, because I don't know anything about Tsukiyuta. So there you go. So many rabbit ears. Uh, trapezium. I know how I said it. The novel Trapezium depicts the 10 years of Yu Higashi, a high school girl who aims to be an idol. To achieve her dreams, she sets four rules for herself. She will not be active on social media. She will not have a boyfriend. She will not stand out in school. And she will make friends with beautiful girls from the North, South, East, and West. I am boggled by what this means or what's this for. I kind of understand if the whole point is to say, um, I'm going to become an idol by not doing the things that idols get caught up for doing, right? They get, they're active on social media and they get dragged for it uh, because they'll say something that is impolitic. They will ha end up with a boyfriend. They get dragged for it because they're not there for everybody else. They stand out in school. They get dragged for it because they stand out in a place where you're not supposed to attract attention to yourself, I guess. I don't really get it. And she will make friends with beautiful girls from the north, south, east, and west. I think that's just a personal goal in this case. We'll see what happens. Uh, I do like Journey to the West, Yuri Idol Edition, though. If that's what this is, is a retelling of that. That seems like pretty cool. Um, eh, well, mm, eh. I don't know. If this show, again, shows up in a series that I'm interested in, maybe I will see. It is based on a novel. Maybe that means something interesting. Uma Musume, Pretty Derby, Beginning of a New Era. Uh, this is a, I guess it's a brand new thing. The film falls Jungle Pocket. Who wishes to participate in the Triple Clown Classic race can only be run once in a lifetime. 
And then they shoot you, they shoot the losers. She faces rivals Agnes Tachyon and Manhattan Cafe. These are all real names of horses. Note, relations are provisional and will be updated when more info is announced. They, at the end of the race, they update, uh, they, they, they reveal to the crowd who are aghast and blown away a four-legged horse. And they have no idea what to make of it. Uma Musume, Pretty Derby, Road to the Top. Theatrical version of, I believe, the third season? I haven't watched any more of it since the first one, so. Oh, OVA and I inspect. We have 15 minutes, folks. Let's see what happens here. Blue Lock episode, Nagi, additional time. I'm not watching the film or the show, so don't know anything about it. Grim Kumikyoku. Uh, Once upon a time, brothers Jacob and William. I'm sorry, Jacob and William. Who knows? Uh, collected fairy tales from across the land that made them into uh, made them into a book. They also had much younger sister, the innocent and curious Charlotte. Is that real? Who they love very much. One day, while the brothers were telling Charlotte a fairy tale like usual, she saw that they saw that she had a somewhat melancholy look over her face. She asked them. Do you suppose they really lived happily ever after? The pages of Grimm's fairy tales written by Jacob and Wilhelm uh, are now presented from the unique perspective of Charlotte, who sees the stories quite differently from their brothers. It's coming to Netflix. It'll probably come to English Netflix at some point. I think it's interesting, uh, the the idea of it. I'm not marking it down as something I'm going to watch. Um, if I happen to see it on Netflix, I might just be like, oh, okay, cool. That might be what I end up watching. We'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, but I'm not really like putting myself um I'm not like putting myself in mind that I'm going to watch it. Hanmabaki versus Kengan Ashida. I'm not going to watch it. I am pretty sure that Alex is who will be crowned victorious in the ultimate fight between the strongest high school on earth and the successor of the Nico style. I don't know, but he should get those calves looked at. Um Ojamajo Doremi 1620s. So this takes us all the way back to the 1620s uh, when Ojamajo Doremi uh, first was launched to commemorate the 425th anniversary of the anime, which made his debut in anime in Japan, whatever, whatever. Rising Impact. A young boy, Gowan, lives in a mountainous rural area with an incredible love for baseball and making the ball really fly. One day he runs into a visitor to the small area and she introduces him to the to a sport that can really make a ball take to flight. Golf. It takes just one shot and Gowan is hooked. With his grandpa, grandpa's approval, he sets off to Tokyo where all the best golf is played with this mysterious woman to learn all he can about golf, encountering many colorful characters and obstacles along the way. The grandpa's like, man, I had a great time in Japan in my youth. You should go too. I don't, it's a, it's a comedy drama sports and it's on Netflix, but I ain't really feeling it. So who knows? Something could happen. Uh, Saint Seiya and Knights of the Zodiac Battle Sanctuary. Um, thought battle tendency in my brain for a second there. Part two, they all look like Jojo, uh, like, you know, um, more Jijoleon, maybe. I, anyway, final hours approaching. There are only five hours left till the arrow of the God Killer pierces Athena's heart. It's a slow arrow. Only the Pope, who sits atop the sanctuary, can save Athena in order to, to save in order for Say and the other four bronze saints to reach the Pope's chamber. They must break through the 12 palaces protected by the golden saints. There are five more palaces waiting for them to reach the Pope's chamber. Can Say and his team defeat the powerful enemies that stand in their way and reach the Pope's chamber? The shocking truth is hidden. The, the arrow is actually the Pope, and it's some sort of metaphor for sex. And I have never seen Saint Seiya in my life, but I know people love this stuff. So please enjoy this. Uh, Sandland the series. Hey, do you like um, Akira Toriyama? Well, they're making a thing. Uh, in the far future, war has destroyed, uh, war is over. Uh, it's destroyed the entire earth, leaving only a barren wasteland where the supply of water is controlled by the greedy king. In search of a long lost lake, Sheriff Rao asked the king of the demons for help and got the king's son Beelzebub, an assistant thief. Together, the unlikely trio sets off across the desert, facing dragons, bandits, and deadliest foe of all, man. Uh, the first half of the Sandland, the series anime, episodes one to six, are titled Akamana Oji, and is based on the film adaptation with some new footage. It will premiere alongside episode seven, which is the first episode of a brand new arc titled Tenshi no Yusha. I don't know if I will, but do, if it is your thing. Dunk. Hmm, yeah, Sandland. There is a trailer for this. <laughs> Shin Yaranaika. A prep school student, Masaki Michita, is running as fast as he can to the restroom in the park when he catches sight of a nice guy, Takakazu Abe, sitting on a bench. Their gazes overlap. Abe asks Michita Michishita if he wanted to play with him and invite him to a brief wrestling match. Michishita, who has a weakness for nice guys, readily follows him, and their great adventure begins. 
I have to say, if you watch the trailer, you're gonna know, you're gonna learn two things. One, nobody is drawn on model. And two, the word crowdfunding comes up way more than I expected. I don't know what to make of this. I think Nico Nico got together to do a thing. Watch the teaser. That's all I ask. Watch the teaser. It is, it explains nothing, but lets you know that, hey, remember 20 years ago when we all saw this? Well, guess what? We animated, sorry, we animated something. <laughs> Yearning to get along with others and not be disliked. First year high school student Hiragi finds himself unable to say no whenever someone requests something of him. Many manga start this way. One summer day while unsuccessfully carrying out yet another request, he encounters an oni girl named Tsumugi who has come to the human world to search for her mother. She does whatever she pleases in the complete opposite of Hiragi. Snow mysteriously begins to fall and their adventure begins. I'm in. Yep. I will, uh, I will watch this. I will watch this. If I see it come up wherever it comes up, uh, it's on Netflix. Maybe we'll get it at some point. I don't know what they'll call it. They'll Tsumigi or they'll call it like Oni Girl Makes the Snow or some weird freaking thing. I don't know. Um, TP Bon looks interesting. Um, an ordinary high school student named Bon becomes part of a team of time traveling agents tasked with saving people's lives during historical events that happen across different eras and locations around the globe. Um, time patrol bon. It is, it's people are like, it looks eighties. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is based on some an older manga perhaps. Um, I don't know. Uh, but it is the last thing in the list. And, uh, that means we get to go back and look at, Hey, what are things that interest you? Cause we still have about nine minutes left and then I'm going to take off. So I'm, I'm looking forward to actually catching up with Udisei Atsuda in the coming season. I'll probably try to watch a little bit here and there, um, like what, like once a week or twice a week or something, just so I kind of slowly catch up to what's going on. Uh, let's see what else is in the thing. Of course, Dungeon Meshi continues. So that's great. Are there new things this season? Well, Yudu Kampu is a sequel, but I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Tonari no Yokai-san. I'm looking forward to that. I think that'll be fun too. Uh, the Fable, interested to see what that's going to be like too. Uh, the, um, uh, appraisal skill, uh, small, small weak domain thing. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. Uh, Shumatsu train. I am interested in seeing what this is. This is kind of mysterious idea. I'm not really sure what's going to happen to it. Definitely interested to see how the third season of, uh, D Duke of death and his black maid work out. Uh, say you radio radio no uramote kind of interested, kind of interested in, in, uh, seeing the one arc of whispering you a love song that I might be interested in. I might even end up dropping it. Uh, Spice and Wolf, the remake. Yes, I think that's cool. I think uh, it's going to be real. Uh, that's going to be fun to watch again, unless I get sick of it because I don't want to watch it again. Then we might have to just not watch it. We all know how we can just stop watching things, right? Um, yeah, we're going to go back through the whole thing. Uh, Mysterious Disappearances. We'll see what that is. The adaptation is going to be like. I am looking forward to Jisan Basa Makageru. Uh, hopefully that will play out as nicely as the manga does. I'm sure it will. Henji no salad bowl. Yes, this is, I'm, I'm bet it's going to be goofy. So I hope it's not complicated. Uh, Hananoi Kunto Koi no Yamai. I'm interested for a romance drama. I hope it will be interesting too. Girls Band Cry. This is more of a test, I think, for me, the more I think about it, but we'll see if it works out to be fun. Um, and then we roll all the way to Bartender, another remake. Good to see how that comes across. And Astronaut, which just might be like the only thing I think where it's like this, I feel like I already know what's going on here. But anyway. Yeah, so when is Flying Witch Season 2? I don't think we have cast off enough of our sins, VO off, to, uh, to have earned it yet. I think we need to be much better. And then uh, Anime Santa will one day bless our lives with more of that. Um, there will be more things coming. I'm more, mostly just at this point counting down the months until we get to watch season two of um, Apothecary Diaries. <laughs> Even though I know what happens in it, I just want to watch more. Okay. Oh, Maison Koku and Lum. It's just mixing the first two works of another person. 
God, Dogma, you might have you might have cracked this. I can't I can't wait to see. Every time I read Idol as idiot in my head, it gets delayed another season. Thank you, Bitecaster. Really appreciate that. And yeah, lots of remakes and sequels this season, Thundercat. This is a lot uh a lot going on. Um that is just like, let's see more of these things. <sighs> Um, I know there's other stuff coming up in like summers and falls that have already been mentioned, uh, where I got, I've been excited to see the reveal that, oh, this thing is coming, but not until July or this thing's coming, but not until like October. And like, I'm not going to, we're not looking ahead of here. You guys can do that too. You can see everything's been announced so far. You certainly can. Uh, but frankly, um, that's gotta be it. Like I only took the one commercial break and that is a three hour session but five minutes of that was spent on the on the on the going live, right? Five minutes of going live turns into that. So I'm technically at two hours. Uh, I'm under my I'm under my three hour limit, and I got to sew this stuff up. So let's do that. Uh, let's find the boot. Thank you again, everybody, for turning into beaches and tuning into beaches anime roundup. Um, it's uh, it was a lot of fun to go over this stuff again with you. I'm glad we were able to kind of rock through this as well as we could. And yeah, keep chatting in the chat if you want to find out how people feel about uh, stuff. I definitely encourage that if you got here late. Um, I'm sure people will catch you up on how I felt about stuff, though it's not that's not important at all because I am but one man and there are so many of you in chat that also have opinions. And as always, we are fine with smut. We are fine with weird stuff. We are fine with the things that, that other people like because if we weren't, then they wouldn't know how to be fine with the stuff that we like, right? So that's all have a lot of uh, have a lot of care and attention uh, paid to how we interact with others in the chat and also in the discord at discord.gg slash LRR. You can help support the stuff we do here by going to the store, store.loadingreadyrun.com, buy some merchandise if you like merchandise kind of things. Take a look at the stuff that's there. New merchandise is always in, you know, I'm always doing merchandise. Thing. I'm the guy who's supposed to be doing the merchandise stuff. I hopefully we'll have new merchandise for you soon um, as I am always kind of grinding that stuff out. And uh, you can also support us on YouTube, youtube.com slash loading ready run, become a member there as a means to support us. You can also uh, do it here, of course, on Twitch, because this is a uh, Twitch stream and Patreon, patreon.com slash loading ready run. That's a, a big place you can go to. If you're already a Patreon user, you might be like, you know what? I'll drop another, I'll drop a dollar on loading ready run, drop five bucks there. And I'll, you know, I'll just drop $150 a month on them. You do what you want. You know, you're crazy like that. I, I've seen you before. I've seen you be weird with your money. I want to be worth my money too. I want to go back to Japan and spend some money at some point. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, but Hey, yeah. Thank you for showing up everybody. Uh, and as always, uh, stay safe, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, stay inside if you can, because they still haven't said the pandemic's over. <laughs> it's, you know, wear a mask, do that stuff. I wear a mask when I go inside, like the grocery store, at McDonald's still, and people look at like, they, they don't look at me anymore for wearing a mask, which is great. But nobody else is, and I'm like, I'm gonna keep, gonna keep wearing one because there's lots of people I know out there who want people to wear masks when you're in public areas, and so I'm gonna keep doing that too. Um, I still walk around outside without one on though because I'm crossing my fingers against that stuff. But get those vaccines if you got vaccines in your area. Please get the vaccines and try to stay safe with stuff. You know, we're all still in this together, and it still has effect on stuff, and uh, we, we got we got to do what we can for each other, right? So I love you all. Thank you for joining, tuning into the Anime Roundup. Uh, we will talk to you later.